What's up, gamers? How's everybody doing in the chat room? We've got, you can't see him right now and you won't, but Danny's crying right now. <laughs> so the episode's off to a really good start. Um, yeah, this is uh, two weeks ago. Wow. I'd like to just sit everyone down and talk about what we saw uh, two weeks ago. Um, it was really something, I think. Uh, and I've received a lot of comments, a lot of messages coming my way over the last two weeks. Pretty much all of them just like, what the fuck did I just watch? Um, yeah. So, you know, just something to think about as we uh, get into the gaming. But before we get into the recap, everybody, can we, uh, can we get some emoticons in the chat room, please? That's a campaign one call out that I feel like I don't really do anymore, but let's go, let's harken back to 2020, a horrible year, and let's think about campaign one and how I always ask for emotes before we started. Let's try that again. So this is what we call viewer interaction. It's very exciting stuff. This is what all the uh, brands tell you to do. Um, let's do it, let's do it. All right, Q intro. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fifth episode of Campaign 3 of Speedrunners and Dragons. My name is Adef, and I'll be your dungeon master tonight. Campaign 3 airs live on twitch.tv slash Adef every other Monday night at 5 p.m. Eastern and will feature returning faces, thrilling action, and stunning twists. Have you come to expect anything less from Speedrunners and Dragons? Joining us for Campaign 3 are Kung Fu Fruit Cup, Patty, The Black Tastic, Dangers, and Danny B. Though we are we are without Bobby this evening. He is at ESA uh, this week, the European Speedster Assembly. Uh, so please do go support Bobby. Uh, his run is at some point this week. Definitely check out the schedule and support Bobby. Um, but into the recap, last time on Speedrunners and Dragons, our heroes ventured to the Met Cloisters, which is a medievalist and religious museum, uh, and were confronted by art that had seemingly come to life with Brink Energy. After their own mini exchanges with these life uh, these still lifes turned moving lifes, they met in a courtyard to see a killer stabbing the brink user for these objects to death. Evidently, this person had a brink that activated automatically or something pr to, to protect them from who they thought was chasing them, not knowing that the party was not their enemy. There was some shock, though, as this killer was a woman, but acted identically to the male serial killer they'd been chasing. The gang made chase through the museum, Polly leading the charge, eager to avenge his sister. When they all caught up to the female killer, the male joined the fray, the two seeming to be working together, one as lifeless as the next. Our gang won the day, helicopters from Infernatech arriving to clean up the mess that they made. Back at B Division, our heroes learned also how important the various movies in the Pixar oeuvre are from a very passionate chef. Also, I want to kill myself today? Okay, yay! Dr. Sam told the gang that she discovered that the two killers were essentially already dead puppets being controlled by someone else's brink. The only thing to connect the two was that they worked on a small team at a company called Positex Solutions, which was stationed in Will's building on the 14th floor. Turns out that guy from the elevator in episode two who liked Mambo number five is the killer. What a twist. How does ADEF keep getting away with these stellar plot lines? Polly, Mamba, Chance, and Rusty headed out to go confront him. Meanwhile, Dr. Rell and Lexi continued research on the machines they'd been finding across the city. Dr. Rell seemed to be acting quite oddly, and once they met Ryan at another machine facility in Queens, some baddies showed up, and Dr. Rell revealed that she had a brink called Mini-Me, and she used it to turn tiny, and uh, she ran away, seemingly too attached to learning about these mysterious teleporting machines. The rest of the gang infiltrated the building in the financial district where the killer worked somewhat successfully? I don't know. To be honest, Polly nearly domed a guy on the marble floor and Chance and Mamba mostly just argued about lasers. Uh, regardless, they found the killer in his office who then seemed to reveal a second Brink ability and was sucked into his computer screen. Our heroes were then transported into a grassy field with a knight on horseback. Welcome to episode five of campaign three of speedrunners and dragons. You might so today? Okay. Yay! <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Adjustable Timmy phone? Adjusting me phone? 
Louise was then on my Hotfix show shortly after, and as soon as we got to New Dog City, we just started laughing. <laughs> we couldn't help it. <laughs> it's just running around talking to people. So thank you for that. Funny. Yeah, what an episode. Uh, lots of very <laughs> sweet comments in the YouTube video. Many of them saying, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Uh, I love Aww. it. Um, in a nice way. Um, so thank you for your comments. Yo. Um, Yo. Uh, <laughs> oh, Tim. I just want to die. <laughs> 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 Anyway, um, <laughs> so we're going to start with Lexi uh, today um, because the group has sort of split. Uh, Mamba, uh, 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 Chance, and Rusty, and Pauly are at, have been sucked into the game. Uh, though we are going to slightly retcon, since Bobby can't be here this evening, we're going to slightly retcon that uh, maybe Mamba was just peering out of his shadow and then there was some kind of confluence between this one-up brink that takes you into the game and Mamba's own brink. And he was not sucked in and is now sort of in this liminal space of his own shadowy brink. That's my in-game rationale for Bobby's absence this evening. Uh, because I know some DMs in home games will RP players when they're missing. I don't like doing that because especially for a show like this where it's a lot of personalities. Um, I would rather character decisions may be made exclusively by the people embodying that character. Um, so yeah, uh, Mamba is still loading. <laughs> Bro, where are we dropping? <laughs> um, yeah, imagine if I had you guys go into Fortnite <laughs> instead of where you're going. <laughs> oh Anyways, God. you find yourself on the battle bus. <laughs> anyway, okay, you wake up and you're at Tilted Towers. And uh, <laughs> you've just touched down Tomato Town, okay? Um, oh, man. Yeah, I know. Uh, so we're going to start with Lexi. So let's pull up the solo layout real quick of just me and Lexi, if possible. Um, and Lexi, you and Ryan are, are, are escaping. So let's get the proper music for it. Oh, the pressure. Okay. So you and Ryan are, are, are booking it out of this sort of facility, right? And Dr. Rell has disappeared. Um, and as you are running out, um, Ryan just looks like confused. They don't get it. Like, why is this happening? Dr. Rell clearly like, this is not typical. Um, and uh, Ryan says, uh, they say, um, we are, uh, there. there is a, a rendezvous point about five blocks from here. We just have to make it there. Yeah, because we're being chased by um... armored guards, um, sort of uh, 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 Riley's men um, that you've encountered several times before. These sort of like brink sensitive militia dudes. Yeah, kind of um, like the people who attacked these, us like... at. Yeah, exactly. Okay. They've got the like dragon masks and the like heavily armor, like body armor, um, Kevlar and stuff. Okay. Um, and they didn't see you. Uh, they, they like burst in after you had exited out the back of this facility. So you seem like it might be okay. Um, and as you're running, uh, Ryan gets a phone call and they're like, I can't do this right now. And they just hand it to you. Okay. Uh, uh hello? Um, it's, uh, okay. Dr. Sam on the other line. And she's like, what's going on over there? Sam, do you know anything about Dr. Rell having a brink? Uh, no, that doesn't... That doesn't sound correct. Okay, if you've ever heard the term mini-me, maybe that will make more sense, but apparently she can get really, really small. I think, that's a, everybody. I th I think that's a character in Austin Powers. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what I don't know what that is. Um <laughs> Uh yeah, too young. Yeah. You know, they're fun. I know they didn't age great, but they're fun. No, you know, seriously, she got it. really small. Seriously. Okay, listen, Ryan can't talk right now. Apparently he's too apparently they're too stressed, but like but she had a bracelet and she twisted it and said mini me and then she disappeared. Okay. And why is she escaping? Why why is she running away from you guys? I don't know. Maybe she's too obsessed with the research that we've been doing, but it seems very weird. Like she's I mean, obviously she's hiding that. She's probably hiding more stuff. Okay, well, like, you know, you know how like you don't love the people you work with all the time? Like I put on a, a rosy disposition about Dr. Rell, but I like kind of low-key hate her because she's so weird. So like, I don't care very much. Um, like it sucks, oh no. But like, come back here and we'll reassess and we'll figure this out. Okay, yeah, is there, a, is, are you meeting us? Do we have any any like pickup or anything? 
Uh, I can arrange for a helicopter to pick you up. Um, please do. I don't think that, um, the guards have been alerted that we're here, maybe, but, uh, but I just want to be safe because last time they really tried to kill us, so. Great. Uh, they'll be at the Queen's safe house in five minutes. Okay, we'll, we'll be there. Great. And she hangs up. Shove, shove um, the phone back at Ryan and be like, why do you make me answer your calls? And Ryan's like, I don't know, I can't right now. Um, Ugh. and, uh, they, the two of you just run to this sort of safe house and Ryan's like, I don't have the key. I'm just going to open a hole in the wall. Please. And uh, they do so, and you scooch in, and they close it back up. Uh, and then you sort of wait there, and we'll sort of jumping ahead. You get in the helicopter, take off. It takes you back to B Division. Um, and uh, as you're about to land, you get a call. Um, Another call. Yes. And this time, Ryan actually picks up, but just puts it on speaker. And they're like, uh, The helicopter? Hello? Can we hear? Uh, all right. There's some kind of aux cord that goes into your headphones. <laughs> Um, so Hello? that you can. <laughs> Hello? What? <laughs> you see what I do, and I'm doing it. Um, what? So, uh, Dr. Sam says, uh, there's been some, uh, Brink energy detected by one of Will's satellites at Madison Square Gardens. We were wondering if you guys would be willing to check it out. There's only two of you, though, so just, like, lay low, but maybe just see what's going on. Okay. And Ryan's like, can anybody beat us at any point? And she's like, yeah, okay, I, I have reached out to Jameson, um, and they are coming back. Uh, they, they're, they're finished with their sort of mission abroad or whatever, and they, they should be there soon. Great. Put us somewhere, put us somewhere out of the way, and we'll do what we can. We're small. We can, well, Max isn't small, but we can make it work. Great. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, and, uh... Who can to talk to Rel? <laughs> and Ryan's like, Ryan's like, uh, yeah, what, have we, we have been doing nothing about Dr. Rel? And Dr. Sam was like, how do you recommend we proceed? Do you have I, any tracking on her? We, we're not really that kind of place. And also, she's the lead scientist. If anybody's not gonna be microchipped, it's gonna be her, I feel like. All right, I'll work on it when I get back. Okay. Um, and, uh, they hang up, and the helicopter starts turning south towards, uh, uh, I guess Madison Square Garden is, like, just south of Hell's Kitchen, so, like, midtown area. Um, and, uh, it's, like, 33rd Street and something or other. Um, 33rd and 6th, I think. Anyway, um, uh, the helicopter is going south, and Ryan is, like, if there's some Brink energy, I just want you to know, like, we should be prepared for anything. Well, I almost kind of murdered something once, so, you know... Something? A person? I don't know, so, but then they it's were an interesting way to say, It's an interesting way to say that. This has been a really a stressful a couple of days for me, Fair. okay? Yeah, you know, out of game, you sometimes forget that uh, it's only been, like, a week. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, fun. <laughs> Yeah, it is kind of that thing of like the last season, the last 10 seasons of Naruto Shippuden aired over the course of like seven years, but actually take place over the course of like two weeks. Um, and the power scaling in that two weeks is like, it's kind of the same thing with any time I run a campaign. It's like six months worth of content that is actually just like three days. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, great. Lexi, we're going to leave you for now. Cool. Uh, and we're gonna pop over to the other lads. Also got heavy rains here, just as a heads up. Okay, cheers. Um, and for the three of you, Patty and Danny and Dangers, I have a treat. Oh, I have a, I have a treat for you. Pizza? I like treats. As we have entered, you know, you're looking out over, over this like grassy field, and there's like a village in the distance. I'm gonna change the music really quick to something that my campaign yeah, one to... boys might. Oh uh, god! My campaign one boys might remember. Oh god! You put fucking Skyrim in my ears again. <laughs> you, We're back, baby! You son oh, of a bitch! The medieval, the high fantasy, the stuff I'm actually okay at. Mm, god bless, Mamma Mia. Oh, isn't it good to be back? Guys, that son like, of a bitch did it. He really like, did it. <laughs> it's like we're back in Shalane, guys. 
and you even oh, remember what it was like. We were so innocent back then. We'd get hammered Patrick, every episode. And shall we look at the menu? Oh no! Yeah. Please don't. Yeah. Let's look at the menu. What's <laughs> on the don't. menu, Dungeon Master? Uh, there is. <laughs> Ooh, uh, that was... I'll have three. <laughs> Please. <laughs> kind of sounds almost like orc language. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this sort of guy on horseback, uh, this knight in shining armor carrying a banner is like, Hello there, travelers. It's good to see you. Welcome to the fields of Etrendia. <laughs> and the horse sort of gallops away. Um, and... Uh, yeah, you're just, like, so discombobulated, the three of you. First of all, Mamba's not with you, which is strange. Uh, but second of all, you're suddenly looking out. You're not in a building anymore. You're in, like, a vast, open uh, wilderness, and there are two suns. Um, there's, like, one sun and a smaller sun, like, very, very slowly. You can't, I guess, notice this. Rotating around. Like, there are two stars in the sky. Uh, uh, and it is bright, and the air is fresh. But there's something strange about the way everything feels. There's like a brinkiness to it all. Um, Do we see yeah. the guy who brought us here? Uh, you can see in the far distance, like somehow maybe time was compressed or like he was sucked in and you're not sure how like time relates as far as like how long time where you are uh, compares to time in the real world. But he is already like, you see a shadowy figure that might be him. Uh, yo, what's up, Corbin? Uh, like maybe a mile in the distance running across the field towards the town. Is, is that him over there? Did anyone get a good look at his face? Meatball, uh, what do your elf eyes see? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, Let's uh, all three of you roll perception, please. All right. Aye, aye, Captain. Yes, sir. Ooh. Oh, baby. Love to see it. Uh, Chance, what are we looking at? That's a great question. Um, dice. Where hopefully. is it? Rusty, dice. Definitely, get? definitely dice. 17. And Polly? 13. 17. Okay, great. Um, Rusty and uh, Chance, you can say with some degree of certainty, not for sure, but like a pretty good degree of certainty, you think it's him based on the fact that you can kind of make out modern clothes on the guy. Um, I look at Polly and I say, yes. What did, the, uh, <laughs> what did the knight on horseback say this place was called? Etrenzia. Etrenzia. Hmm. You know I'm going to mess that up every time I try and remember, right? Uh, and suddenly, uh, in all three of your hands, like out of nowhere, just bloop, a map appears uh, in your hands. Um, and, uh, we can cut to a, a good old classic ADEF map if Richard has it queued up. Uh, I'm a map. We oh got a goodness. real map. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Um, this is, fun fact, uh, this will mean nothing to, unless my brother were here, but I, I run a campaign here in Los Angeles as well, and I'm using that world as this um so uh so that i didn't have to create something completely new um so that's why the, friendly to the world that's why the map is so full we are not using all that stuff um but uh that is why it is so everything because it's another campaign that i'm running because i just want all the adf campaigns to be in the same universe you know what i mean it's all the it's the it's the acu um or the s and d c u Either way, phase three for S and D way more exciting than day. phase five right now. <laughs> um, current phase kind of snoozer, dude. Current phase kind of mid TBH. I like the ones from when I was a kid. Wait, really? Wait, I like the ones from when I was a kid. Wait, that's actually crazy. You're where's, wrong. Where's Thanos, dude? Where'd Thanos go? That fussy. Um, <laughs> bro. <laughs> If only Ant-Man became small and went into the thussy, am I right? <laughs> if only. <laughs> Do you think Ant-Man could hang out in the wrinkles of Thanos' chin and have a good time? Be like, woo! Yeah. I don't know why that's what he would, but maybe he'd do that, you know. <laughs> woo! <laughs> party in there. Oh, woo party? That's a sub alert, dude. Nice. Woo! Woo party! 
Um, that's what he would say. That's what Ant Man would say. We've we've done it. So we've yeah, it. Uh, do any of the three of you? Do you think any of the three of you, your character, would have any experience with uh, like map reading, like a boy scout? I'm a or rat, something? so absolutely not. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> you do have a mini version of the map, by the way. Cute. I um, I know subway maps. That's about it. Chance. Probably not. Cool. So you're looking at a piece of paper. <laughs> um, <laughs> And one thing you can tell, though, is like clouds are starting to creep in, but they don't look like rain clouds and a light snow begins to fall. Um, so already just looking at the map, you can determine that you're probably somewhere in the north. Um, and uh, I actually let me just send you this file, you guys, so you don't have to look at it on the stream. I'll put it in campaign three resources. Thanks. Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, and so, yeah, it's snowing lightly, and uh, so you feel like you're probably in the north somewhere. And just to your left, um, there are uh, there's a very dense group of pine trees um, that seems massive and sprawls for miles. Uh, Polly picks up a stick on the ground that he sees. Are there sticks? Yeah, sure. All right, great. Uh, he says, I saw this in a documentary one time, and he points at the at the piece of paper, and he says, I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. <laughs> a documentary. <laughs> Harry Potter is a documentary <laughs> to, to Polly? Specifically, The Prisoner of Azkaban is is a documentary I think, to you. Apparently I so. think in this to situation, Chance would definitely know what Harry Potter is. And yes, he would just kind of he would just kind of stare and go. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're stupid. Well, Polly, did it work? I don't know. Oh, no, it didn't work. You Harry happens. Potter <laughs> muggle idiot. No, it's nothing a map, happens. you dumb dumb. Look, there's landmarks and stuff. Maybe yeah, it's well, where so we are. The map was also what they used that phrase on in the documentary. I know it's I, a map. I would love a version of Harry Potter where they cut to confessionals. <laughs> <laughs> and Harry's just like, Harry's just like, yeah, I don't know. I just am so tired of Ron, honestly. Like, <laughs> I fucking hate that guy. The, the, I'm just, the I'm just trying to get an A with in with the backlight. Yeah, exactly. The backlight silhouette with the voice changer. Yeah, I don't know. I think Harry's kind of a fucker, honestly. <laughs> Harry Potter must not go to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry this year. It removed. It's so clearly Dobby. Yeah, <laughs> the ears and everything. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I'm yeah. Bad lamp. elf. Bad elf. Oh my god. Um, let's start doing something. Uh, I take Polly in my arm and say, "That's from a movie. It's a it's a kids' movie where it's all made up. It's not real." This is an actual map. There's no magic feat, no passphrase. Oh, yeah. Maybe there how is. You, I don't know. Explain how it got into your hands then. I think that's magic, sir. I think that's magic, sir. <laughs> Does have a good point. I think we're in some sort of video game. Have you uh, heard of video games? As you say that, as you say that, you see a title screen appear in the sky. Um, and it like a sword flies in whoosh, and stops midair and then whoosh, and then words, doo -doo 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 -doo, and it says, Sword of the Hero of V, Blade Lock. Who's that? Video game. Uh, and Chance, can you roll history for me? Yes. And probably Polly also, honestly. 11. History, you said? Yeah. 17. Uh, both of you actually recognize this. Um, neither of you have played this game. Um, so yeah, Sword of the Hero 5 with the Roman numeral V, uh, Blade Lock. Um, and, uh, <laughs> v. it, uh, <laughs> v. Uh. it, uh, this is a, a, like a critically acclaimed series. Um, it's like El an Elder Scrolls accompaniment, essentially, like very similar to that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, this one apparently sold quite well, you think you remember, but neither of you have played it but it's definitely a video game that you have seen. See? Video game. How, How did you know that so get quick? here? Because we 
I don't know. We got sucked into a computer. Do you not remember like five seconds ago? I think uh, I think my brother Giovanni played this game. Can I call him up? <laughs> yeah, call up Giovanni. See if your phone works. I pull out my phone and I call up Giovanni. Uh, it does not light up. There's no electricity or anything. Oh, the battery died. Maybe. That's rough. <laughs> Maybe, Polly. <laughs> I like that Polly's Maybe. just asking. <laughs> the well, the battery died? What's going on? <laughs> I charged Maybe. this thing right before I left. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wait, I appear. <laughs> ADEF appears in front of Hello. <laughs> um, no. Uh great. Uh just to get things moving a little bit. Oh um, yeah. Uh you do surmise that uh I mean he's gone by now. You have stood here for like five full minutes. He has run into the forest uh towards the town of what you think might be uh, uh I believe it's called uh Bryn Town. He's run towards Bryn Town. Um and so you you assume that that is where he's going. Tally ho, lads, to do Bryn Town. Do we have like a, a read on where we would be on the map? You think you're not, because none of you know how to read a map, you're not really that sure, but you are <laughs> definitely on the edge of the winter woods somewhere west of Bryn Town. So like you could be just north of Fort Breas at the edge of the winter wood, which is the really thick forest, um, or you could be north of the Great Bridge, you're not really sure. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we should just follow wherever he was going. Sounds like a plan. Word. Um, so you are, uh, you begin walking along the tree line, uh, and you walk for maybe a good hour, uh, and you, you pass where you saw him, and, uh, eventually you see a path that seems to lead into the tree line and, uh, what seems to be northward, which would lead you to, you think, Brintown. Yo, Chance, you ever steal this game before? Uh, is Maybe. it brand? Is it brand new? Um, it's relatively new. It came out this year. Hmm. You got like a strategy guide in there or something? <laughs> uh. Uh, worth checking, I would say. No, um, you I don't do think have so. you do have do you I? found a magazine, uh, like a a video game weekly magazine that has an article about it. What does the article say? Or do um, you want me to art? Do you want me to <laughs> improv this shit? Uh, no, I'll improv it for you. Okay. Uh, it, it basically says, uh, it says, sort of the Hero 5 blade lock has a little something for everyone. And it has like a rating that's like, no. <laughs> it says like 7 out of 10. It's a little bit Dark Souls and a lot bit Skyrim. And you're just like, oh. Jesus Christ. I just put the magazine back in my pocket and say, no, I don't have anything. <laughs> um, no. But yeah, you surmise that there probably wasn't that much useful stuff, maybe other than like the names of relevant characters, mm. um, like main characters or whatever, but that's probably it. Any like Billingsley's mentioned? <laughs> no, uh, oh. not at first glance. No, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Maybe a supporting There's, character. Maybe. Who knows? He does tend to appear. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, um, what I, that's who I thought the knight was. I thought you were no, going to start no. this session with, no. I'm Billingston Billing Bing. No, no, no. <laughs> do, wait, do you know that there was a Billingston in campaign two as well, Patrick? I heard, yeah. Uh, I heard Killingston that. Killingsworth. Yeah. yeah yes. Um yeah anyway i'm uh, a pickle farmer i am dillingston dillingsworth <laughs> <laughs> i love riding roller coasters i'm thrillingston thrillingsworth <laughs> thrill ho <laughs> i love <laughs> never mind oh yeah um, okay i love curing the sick i'm illingston illingsworth mm. i'll have sex with anyone i'm willingston willingsworth <laughs> there it is he got through the filter. He broke it down. <laughs> I did. Um, anyway, uh, so as you turn onto the path that leads into the forest, um, you hear... My ears perk up. It's getting a little Do closer see... now. I can I, like to can I scope out like the... 
direction of the noise? Am I able to? It seems to be coming from like all around you. Hmm. Okay. Can we see anything in the trees? Um. You you feel like you notice some webbing in the trees. Hmm. But no no movements yet. Don't see any movements. No. Okay. I'm just, I'm propped on, we'll say Polly's shoulder again. My ears are just kind of perking and like doing that, like. Sure, you're waiting thing. for something to happen. Yeah. We all sure. hear this though, right? Yes. Oh. Uh, Rusty the most distinctly for sure, but all three of you definitely hear this. None of you happen to have a flamethrower, do you? Yes, definitely. But yes, definitely. And I pull out the blowtorch that I yoinked. <laughs> you do have a blowtorch. I, I yoinked a blowtorch. Um, I pull out the blowtorch I yoinked and flick that shit on if I'm allowed to. Yeah, it should work because blowtorches, we'll say that this one is more based on like a lighter, so it doesn't have a battery. It's piezoelectric, so it should work. Okay. Um, so yes, you are big ups in the chat to anyone who knows what piezoelectricity is. Big. That's the vocab word of the week. Yeah, um, so piezo, it is. Polly knows. Um, yeah, hey Polly, what's piezo electricity? Uh, I think that's the electricity. No, 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 I'm not asking Danny. No, yeah, I know. <laughs> Polly's answering. It's like shaking okay. a circle and you cut it into triangles. <laughs> Thank you. Piezo, <laughs> pie. Thank you. I was very much so hoping you would do that, and you did, and I'm very proud of you. Thank you for that. That was um, good. Yeah, uh, piezoelectricity is uh, electricity created from uh, squeezing so-called uh, piezoelectric electric materials. So like quartz, for example, when it's compressed or stretched, it releases sparks of electricity. It's how lighters work. Um, not the Zippo ones. The Zippo ones, you're creating a spark by rubbing the flint against the whatever. But like the big uh, uh, lighters, the long ones. Candle lighters. Yes, candle lighters, thank you. When you press down the thing on top, you're releasing the butane out the front, and then the squeeze, you're squeezing a crystal uh, inside, and it creates a spark along the gap, which lights the gas. Um, huh. there yeah, are that's lots what I said. Of, it's also how some watches work. Some watches work with pits. Anyway. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, you walk for a little longer, and then the it gets closer, and suddenly a little... Uh, a tiny little spider appears in front of you. Just a tiny little guy. Um, little oh, just spiders. a little guy. Point the blowtorch at it. Not attacking it, just defensively. And then it turns around and scurries away. You know, in that documentary I watched that I mentioned earlier, there was a lot of little spiders, and they turned into really big spiders not that far after. And right as you say that, two massive spiders oh, uh, God damn it. <laughs> come out of the clearing, and they're, like, waist high, and they're... Uh, and, uh, please roll initiative for me. Oh, boy. Ollie? 21. Ooh. Ooh. Chance? 21. Oh. oh. Rusty? 17. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Stupid. Uh, uh, <laughs> ruined it. Ruined it. Imagine being slow. Bro. <laughs> okay. Uh, Paul, your chance. Who wants to go first? You can go first. All right. Oh. Chance, it's all you. Uh, I would like to... I, can, can I attack with a blowtorch? I don't... Yeah, sure. I can come up with something for that. Sure. Let me know. Um. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to run up and like put it up against it. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Uh great. Um could you roll a d20 and add dexterity for me? That would be a 9 total. Does that hit? Let's find out. That does not hit. So you get up close and it sort of cowers back and up against you. Um like, huh! uh, <laughs> and <laughs> uh you you miss. Um Ch uh, if you move backwards, if you don't have a disengage action, you will incur an attack of opportunity. Mm -hmm. So it's I, up to you what you want to do. I would like to, uh, what is it called? The thing I always do? Inspiration. Yes, I can inspire yes. others through stirring words. I will inspire Polly. Okay. And give what are your him inspiring a words? D6. My inspiring words are, Can you kill this fucking thing? Oh my <laughs> god! 
Why? Please. <laughs> good. Uh, Very you feel good. you feel heartily inspired. <laughs> um, just so inspired. Uh, and uh, on that, Polly, it's your turn. Yeah, you don't gotta tell me twice. I fucking hate spiders. Oh shit. Yeah. The rated R version of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Follow the fucking spiders. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Uh, I'm going to use, I'm gonna use that inspiration die right now. Okay. You got fucking huge. Uh, Bro. <laughs> and then I. That's still not enough, so I'm going to use one of my adrenaline dice. Okay. Which, uh, Ooh. Bro, we're pulling all the stops on this spider. I, I want to hit this spider so bad. Uh, uh, all of that added uh -oh. up to 13. It hits. <laughs> all right. Hey. Um, uh, what are you doing? Uh, I'm I'm punching it uh, right in. Does it have like an array of eyes? Yes. Okay. Eyes. Okay. With my brass knuckles. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> show, show me those damage dice, baby. Yeah, uh, six damage. You, and it just caves its head in, and like, <laughs> purple blood starts oozing out of its eyes, and it's like, <laughs> it's like floundering on the ground, and the other spider's like, <laughs> and it like bolts, it just leaves the other one behind, it's just like flailing on the ground, <laughs> uh, and it just slowly bleeds out, and... <laughs> Tribbles up dead. Ugh. I attempt to wipe my hand off on Chance's jacket. I immediately <laughs> do not let him and uh, point wait. the blowtorch at him. <laughs> Chance, Chance, roll a d20 to roll, uh, <laughs> roll a roll a brass knuckle attack roll to see if you can rub the blood on the on the jacket against okay. Chance's armor class. <laughs> I rolled much better this time. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, 22. Uh, so that, he's able to get the blood on you. Chance, do you want to blowtorch him? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I, okay. I, don't, I don't think so. He rubs blood, spider goo all over your, your, your robes. Um, how do you react to that? I don't, I don't even know. I, I'm disbelief. <laughs> Can't believe this has just happened. Just, just looking at him like, <laughs> like, cause, cause he just bashed a giant spider's head in that was probably gonna get me, since I missed. And he did kill him, like I asked him to. Right. But then he. Oh, that's a good. So noise. It's just kind of like. Yeah. You need to ah. stew on that. Really just think about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll say for the sake of time, you, you make it through the rest of the forest uh, with no issues. Um, and you make it to uh, Brentown. I'm laughing and because we've already had like seven or eight in the sake of time moments. In this episode alone. Yes. <laughs> and it's been only been going for 45 minutes. Because this is, uh, there's a lot to get through in this episode. Uh-oh. Um... So uh, you uh, you make it to the the, the entrance of town, and uh, Brintown is a port town. Um, it is uh, it is the seat of northern maritime trade, uh, largely for uh, lumber mills um, within the Winterwood, and there's also a lot of fishing. You surmise, um, and there's sort of lots of uh, people walking around doing various tasks. Um, and uh, there are people carrying, you know, planks of wood over to the, the port. There are uh, merchants haggling things in the street. And a light snow is falling and creating a dusting across the ground. Merchants haggling in the street, you say? I do say. Is there May any I... signage indicating that we are, in fact, in Brintown? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What yes. do they have? Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Welcome to Brintown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what do they have? Um, there is an egg merchant. Uh, with lots of fresh eggs. I need six mm. eggs. That's too expensive. Um, and uh, there are um, there is a jewelry merchant mm. and a um, um, a sort of stationary merchant, like a merchant of paper goods. Uh, those are the three that are out today right now. I would like to steal some eggs. 
yes. Uh, you walk up to the egg merchant, I assume. Do you do this stealthily, or are you just walking up? Stealthily. You uh, know, hiding stealth. in plain sight kind of sure. sort of roll thing. Sure, stealth for me. Ooh, baby. That is... I did just Beauty and the Beast you. I'm glad someone got it. 21. Um, yeah, you feel like no one has noticed you. Um, somehow you have managed to weave through the egg goers uh mm -hmm. without notice um and you're you're there you're you're right by the the table yoink 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 um mm. how many eggs do you want how are they pack are they packaged at all or is it just like a big bucket of eggs it's just table a big, of eggs it's just a big <laughs> it's a big like uh uh for lack of a better word like trough inlaid with hay so that the eggs are sort of resting in the hay. It's just the bunch of, okay, I'll take, well, there are three of us, right? So I guess I'll take three eggs. Okay, you managed to pocket three eggs. I'd um, like to scamper over to the jewelry station. Sure. Uh, are you doing this stealthily? Um, I mean, I'm small. Can, I mean, does anybody see me? I guess I can do it stealthily. I'll try. You can roll, do we have you rolling stealth with advantage? Was that what I had you doing prior? I don't remember. Um, let's just say for the sake of it, that's a rat trait because sure. it makes sense. Um, so yeah, we'll say you get advantage on stealth rolls. Uh, 27. Yeah, no one notices you. <laughs> you are <laughs> invisible. <laughs> yeah. I rolled nat 20 and I have plus seven on stealth. There so, you go. um, so yeah, I creep on up in there and I see what I can see. Um, there is a ruby inlaid necklace and a uh, an emerald ring um, with like a, an inlaid flat emerald. Um, and there is a, uh, a diamond jewel that's about the size of you. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I've kind of taken a liking to helping Chance with his kleptomania. So I grab the smallest of the three, the one that I think I could probably the steal emerald away ring with. You think you can you can now. Right. So I'm just going to grab it in my grubby little paws and run off with it. Okay. Uh, Polly, what are, what are you doing while all this is going on? Looking at my beef compatriots in pure disgust. <laughs> <laughs> I look over my shoulder at Polly and do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, the three of you regroup in the center of the town square, and just as you do, the game... You remember for a moment you're in a video game and the architecture of the game begins to take note of the things that are happening. And suddenly you hear, my eggs! And then you hear at the other side, my jewelry! And uh, suddenly townsfolk are pouring out of their homes and like running over like, what's happened? What's happened? Guards! Guards! And uh, guards start assembling in the, uh, in the town square um, and uh, they're all wearing like leather armor, uh, uh, studded leather armor, and they... Uh, running like, what should be the problem? And they're all, all these NPCs are sort of like interacting. Um, and uh, the three of you are just sort of standing there. Um, and a guard comes up to you and is like, hello, travelers. Hello. Hi. Yo. How are you? What brings you to Brintown? We have this map and we figured out that we're the closest to Brintown. Something has been stolen in the marketplace. <laughs> oh, no. What was stolen? Do you know what happened? I don't. We just arrived here. Something was stolen in the marketplace. What was stolen? Eggs. Eggs? Jewelry. Jewelry? Who would steal eggs and jewelry? Dialogue tree error. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, that Dialogue answers that. Dialogue tree error. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, can you so help I, us find the thieves yes i would does love he, to lend my assistance does he have like an exclamation mark over his head yeah yeah it's bobbing up and down slowly yeah um <laughs> and uh it, it changes it disappears and suddenly you all see a quest hud uh appear and it's pointing <laughs> to you guys <laughs> <laughs> um and he is just like he's like let me know when you find it I'll be in the mayor tavern. And he just turns around and like <laughs> runs over to a tavern, but he runs for a second. He gets caught on something.
<laughs> that was pretty good, actually. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he he proceeds into a building. So Bridgetown we're not giving it. Pretty, added pretty late in development, it seems. What's the, uh, I give, what's the, quest I give reward? I give the eggs to Polly and Rusty. Uh, the, the quest reward is keys to the city. Oh. Yo, you think I, we could, you want to trade those eggs in for something better? Mm, we got to pin it on someone. Does it tell us what the reward is? Yeah, keys to the city. Oh, oh we just need to, keys to the what's city. What's the actual, what's the wording of the quest? Do we need to pin it on someone or can we just return the stolen items? Um, it says, it says, get the stolen items back to the city guard via any means necessary. Oh. Perfect. Well, yeah, let's just get, we'll go give it. Let's go to the galloping pony. Yeah, Mayor. it's some, some horse related tavern name. I don't yes. know. I'm, I'm running on empty. But before we let's go, go I'm to like, the Lord of the Rings place. Yeah. Before we go, I'm kind of curious about this ring because I, I, I don't know. I might have heard in video games that things can be enchanted or something like that. So I'm like turning sure. the ring over and like tapping it and seeing if it does anything. Uh, when you like you accidentally slip it onto your wrist at one point because it's obviously it fits around like your almost your entire body um yep. and uh when you do so look through it you feel your uh your health increase oh how nice um your 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 total health and if you are at full health when this happens it goes up with um your total health goes up by three okay hey rusty i just noticed you got a bar above your head what is that yeah, it there's like got, a. It just got longer. <laughs> <laughs> that's a I, that's I, a health bar. I feel so just flick, I'm alive. Just it. Nice health bar, man. Uh, th thanks. You too. Oh. Oh. I here and I uh, trade the ring for the egg and lose my hit points, I guess. But. Uh, so well, chance, thanks. if you put the ring on, your health will go up by three. But I don't know if that's really your thing. Oh, I'm wearing gloves, so I don't put it on. Okay. So I don't uh, chance to take his gloves off. So you have the ring uh, and two eggs, and uh, Rusty's carrying an egg. So you guys head over to the tavern? Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Let's go turn that shit in. So you open the door to the tavern, and there's a bunch of hustle and bustle, and you see the guard just, like, standing in a corner up against the wall, like, facing the wall. Um, <laughs> and he's got the bobbing exclamation point again. Um... And as you start to walk over towards him in this sort of hustle and bustle tavern, you just hear, no fucking way. Oh my God, look what the cat dragged in. And you turn and it's quick. It's the like the guy with the cowboy hat and the, uh, the sort oh. of Western looking clothes and the six piece on his hip. And he has a bow and arrow around him now. And he's just like, God. Damn oh god, it. he's got a bow. He's got a bow. He has a bow. Yeah. yeah. The really handsome one. <laughs> this is um, the guy who shot the pigeon, right? Yes. The one yeah. with the gun. Yes. Yeah. Uh and we are gonna cut to Lexi for a second. Uh so we are cutting over to Lexi. Hi. Oh yeah, Lexi. And we yeah, will I know. <laughs> we'll keep the playlist where it is. Uh well, I'm so working on the Lexi, you uh you and Ryan make it to this building near Madison Square Garden and go down and you arrive at the, the front of the stadium and it's pretty late at night right now. Um, it's like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Uh, so there's not a soul around. Okay. Um, and Ryan is like, how do we do this? Uh, we don't see any, any guards or anything? No. So you're probably better at brink sensing than I am. Do you feel anything? There's definitely something happening inside. Like, you pinpoint anywhere specific? Not really. Just uh, maybe in the center. Hmm. Okay. Um. You want me to? You want me to call? Yeah, because Ryan went with her to the building and saw where she comes. Yeah. You want me to call for any? Any regular backup, by the way? What, like armed guards? Yeah. I think they might get in the way. I just want to... You, you and I are trying to be covert here, I think. Right. 
just worry about other people being... Because it's just us, so... Oh, I'm not trying to get into any combat right now. I'm not trying to get into any danger of any kind at the moment. Great. Phew, that sounds Excellent. great. So why don't oh. we just play this as stealthily as possible? I agree. Um, I am the best at climbing, but we can go check the doors. Maybe I can, you know, something about it. Sure. I'm gonna um, walk up and, um, are there any, like, security doors? Maybe yeah, electronically sealed? Yeah, there's an RFID, sealed? there's an RFID swipe. Uh, for one of the side doors. You don't go to, like, the main door. Ryan sort of escorts you to, like, this, like, side door. Uh, right. You you gather it's an entrance for talent um, oh. when they have okay. events at MSG. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's an RFID swipe, and it's locked. Okay. So she's probably going to walk up to it and see if she can, like, use her brink on it. Uh, yeah. Can you roll... I forget every time. Do we decide intelligence for this? Probably. I think that's um, what we did. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Roll an intelligence check for me, please. So d20 plus intelligence. Uh, only 11. Oh, yeah, we did decide Arcana. That's right. We're exchanging. Well, no, because this is a Brink check, not a science check. So we did swap Arcana for science. Um, but for her Brink, this is just a pure intelligence roll. 11? Yeah. It's good enough. Okay. Uh, you short it. Um, and it and and unlocks and the uh, the door seems to be unlocked. Okay. Um, do you think she has wireless station with Max? At this. I don't know. That's a you. Is that one of the skill tree things? Uh, it's not. I need to out. Maybe via your phone. I wouldn't be surprised to learn if you have like an app or something. Yeah. Uh, that can communicate with him, but not via, like, telepathy or anything. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, she's gonna say, um, Max, stand guard. So she's gonna get Max to sit, because obviously he'd probably be loud moving around anyway. He, uh, mm -hmm. he posts up, you know, so... <laughs> um, yeah, just like yeah, that? Yeah. yeah, he's like a total Chad. Oh, nice. uh, it's, uh, name five brothers, please? <laughs> um... Yeah, so he's uh, he's posted up at the entrance. Okay. You're like, let's go. Uh, the two of you sneak in, and let's have you both roll stealth, please. Ryan got a an 18. Uh, nine. Okay. <laughs> um, you uh, you get inside, and uh, you're sort of in this like exterior area. It's like the 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 hallways surrounding the interior stadium. Um, and so you would have to, like, go through another set of double doors to make it into, like, the seating area. Um, can, can Lexi feel anything, by the way? I, I assume she can feel something faint, yeah, but... Yeah, you sort of feel something is happening in the area. Um, you're not entirely sure what. Uh, and Ryan suggests, you know, why don't we go... Let's go to the rafters. Let's go to the top floor and go in the rafters and then look down. We could do that, or um, do you think anybody's manning security? We always check security cameras. That's a great thought. Yeah. Um, so they're like, where's the security? <laughs> well, let's try looking at the signs. <laughs> uh, you find a map of Madison Square Garden, and there seems to be uh, like an employee area yeah. um, not far from you, um, like maybe a third of the way around. Okay. So you walk sort of you stealthily, and you like knock some stuff over on it. You're like, oh! Like you hit like a, a rope, um, a rope stand that falls over, and Ryan yeah, catches this it. Clumsy. And they're like, "It's fine, just like chill." He um, like has to set it back up perfectly. Right. Uh, and the two of you make it to this door, um, and it appears to be locked, not with RFID, but like via key. Um, and Ryan is like, "Do you care if I just open the wall? Does that bother you?" Not at all. Okay, cool. Can you make it look kind of like it was, or is it just weird? Somewhat. It's Fine. never going to be perfect. Let's just do it in the corner. Yeah. Uh, and they uh, take off their gloves and open a, a hole in the wall, and you pass through, and then they pass through and close it, and they, like, try to, like, smooth it out. <laughs> um, but it's, like, clear something has happened. <laughs> yeah. I just um, won't understand what. Yeah, they're like, that's weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, so you're inside this sort of employee bay, 
um, and it has sort of a cafeteria area, and then off to the side, there's a security booth um, with some some monitors. Anybody in there? Ow, oh, totally. Uh, Madison Square Garden at night, totally Empty. unmanned. Empty. Weird that least, there's nobody as here. far as you can tell, it's empty. I mean, like, you know, there's a door into the security area and there's a window there too, and you can't see anybody readily. Okay. I'm gonna go like the window just to make sure. As you peek in, there's a guy asleep in a swivel chair, uh, in the corner, just like Okay. Can we see any of the <laughs> TV screens? Like any of the monitors from uh the window? Yeah, roll per a roll investigation for me. Do you? Uh, bad, but I got eight. Uh, uh, Ryan will also roll four. Um, there's a glare. There's a tint in the window. You can't really see. Okay. The door to security locked. No. But uh, way to like. <laughs> Can we do anything about that guy? Uh, we could very slowly wheel him out and hope, or just be very quiet and hope he doesn't wake up. <laughs> well, we could just go in and look and then come back out and talk. I don't know. Look, last time I shocked somebody, they were dead. So I don't need to be careful. Yeah. Uh, let's walk in very quietly, look at the monitors for a bit, and then walk out very quietly. Uh, let's reroll stealth. 16. 16 also for Ryan. Great. Um, Mal, she like took off her shoes. Yeah, you creep in and leave the door. He, uh, They leave the door open and you look up at the monitors and you just hear. Oh, so, so, so. Uh, oh mamma mia. <laughs> <laughs> you either you either a honk shoe motherfucker or you're a me 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 motherfucker. <laughs> There's only two types of guys. Um yeah, he's a me 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 or he's like me 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 me. Um and there's a big snot bubble. <laughs> uh, but uh no. Uh you look up at the monitors and this music's not quite right. So let's go. Healthy. Um, I think the first place um, Lexi would be inclined to look is like in the middle of the stadium because I feel like that that just seems like where things happen. Sure, the like inside the stadium, like where the concerts are and everything. Yeah, so we'll look from there and then. Uh, oh. There are there are several figures standing there. Um, there is uh, there's a guy. You, like the resolution of these CCTVs is not great. Um, but you can see that there's like a bunch of people in masks, several of whom are holding rifles. Um, and they're surrounding a guy who's sort of standing still and he's in what looks like maybe a suit and he has a dragon, a very ornate dragon mask as well. Um, and there's a guy standing next to him who's sort of like leaning up against something and just tapping his foot. Okay. Um, they're like... <laughs> slowly closes the door and it like bumps a little bit on the way out against Ryan's shoe and they're like and it's that moment when you like everybody fucking stops for a second you're like until you wait for another snore to come and it's just like <laughs> close the door um, and the two of you are out and Ryan's like that's Riley bro that's Riley in there one against the wall no 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 the one in the suit and the mask did we see the one that, that the guns were pointing at? No, they're protecting him, it looks like. Oh, and so it's the, pointing... It's like, it's like a dude... Okay. Riley is in, like, a suit, and, uh, and the dragon mask, he's, like, here, and he's, like, concentrating on something. Okay. Um, and then there's a guy not wearing a mask, the only one of the, like, ten of them not wearing a mask, and he's just, like... Okay, and then so surrounding them, pointing guns outwards, are like riflemen. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, at first I thought it was somebody having guns pointed at them. No, 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 no. Oh. Hey, we should play our information, but I feel like we can sense them. They can sense us, right? 
Not necessarily. I mean, you know, sensing Brink isn't really a science. Uh, since they might be the source of the Brink energy, they might be polluting the surrounding air, so they might not be able to sense anything outside of themselves. I'm gonna read up more on this. There's not really any literature. That's the whole reason B Division exists. Hey, well, I gotta talk. Okay, maybe I'll talk to more people there. Um, so who's the guy without the mask on? Did you? I couldn't tell. Going in there. Yeah, we oh, are yes. not going in there. Okay, good. <laughs> we uh, should probably... I'm gonna call the others. Yeah. Figure out where uh, Jameson is. Maybe tell Doctor Sam. Yeah, great. Uh, and they start sending some texts and calling people, and we'll cut back to the boys. Bye. And bye. Um, hello, boys. Uh, hello. So, so the uh, yeah, quick walks over to you guys and is like. Hey, guys. I've instinctively dived behind a wall, a bar, something. <laughs> um, the NPCs don't even, like, notice. The bartender's still just, like, cleaning a glass. Would you like to know information about the surrounding area? Um, just don't look, the guy's got a gun. Uh, what is a gun? <laughs> what is a string, gun, close parentheses? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, so Quick walks up. He's like, no need to be scared, guys. I'm, uh. I'm stuck here, same as you, so. How? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, well, okay, look, I'll admit it. I was paid to tail you guys. Um, and uh, I snuck into the building, and I was on the other side of the sort of center cubicle that uh, our friend here was in because I, again, was on cleanup duty in case things got gross and a little messy. I was to clean up after the fact. Um, but I did not get paid for this. Um, and when he did his sort of like brink thing and sucked everybody into the computer, I went first and I've been here for like eight hours. Okay. I've been on several side quests already and they were bad. And turns out my gun doesn't work, ah. which is fun. Doesn't work somehow for some reason. Don't know what that's about but I can still use my brink with the bow and arrow, so I've pivoted to that for now. But I'd very much like to get out, and I know we've had a bit of a rough history, but you're the first non-annoying people I've seen so far, and I'd love to strike a bit of an accord if possible. How about you can work with us if no matter what happens when we get out of here, you don't, you don't work against us anymore. Doesn't matter how much you get paid, you're not working against us. I don't care what kind of shady shit you do, but not at our expense. You know, I think I needed kind of this wake up call in the sense that like, I don't like working for Riley. He's like so controlling the money. Like, don't get me wrong. Like the money's really good and surprisingly the benefits also. Um, but his contracts are not worth the trouble. I mean, like, it's good money, but it's just, like, a lot, you know? I'd rather go How back much to money? just, like... I'd really rather not say. Oh, come on. We're wow, in a video sir. game. You are hiding behind a bar, sir. <laughs> come on. We're in a video... We're in a video <laughs> game. <laughs> the information is still real information. I don't... I don't like talking about money, you know? It's a lot. You don't want it's to just say the word money contracts. four times. Polly, of all of their files, I've read up on a lot of you guys. I can find almost nothing on Lexi for some reason, but you specifically, your ACT score, man, it's so low. What's what that? happened to you in high school? What happened, man? Listen, I didn't care about school. I got, I had like eight siblings to feed. I had to probably work for my dad. ACT meant acting class and didn't do it. Yeah. Anyway, guys, yeah, I'm sure. I'm very attacked right now. <laughs> Polly, Polly, you got yourself a deal. I'm, I'm, I'm in. I want the fuck out of this game so bad. I go to shake his hand. Uh, he shakes your hand. I squeeze it a little bit too hard. He's like, ow, 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 stop. <laughs> stop. God, Jesus Christ. Um, and he, uh, he's like, great. Well, 
I can only see two ways out of this. Either there's some way to complete the game and get out, or we just kill this guy and hope for the best. Did you see where he went? I have some leads, but I wasn't really amped about attacking him alone, so this is very good. What else does he do? You know. Uh, well, he got here about an hour before you guys, and uh, he, I think, got a room at the local tavern. Oh, I was or more the, asking, the like, inn. combat abilities, why you didn't want to attack him. Oh, it's not so much, like, his brink is not a combat brink. Um, well, rather, I guess his brinks. I don't know how this is possible, but it very much seems like he has two, which is fun and also somehow unfair. Um, but he has that thing where he makes like the puppets, right? Um, and they're strong, but they're only strong because he's strong. So I think he's just combat savvy. Oh, oh, okay. And also L presumably he knows this game better than we do. Mm. Since we it's got on some eggs machine. to trade for some keys. Can you give us a second? I don't know what that means, but sure. We have a side quest to finish. Oh, Jesus Christ. If I could tell you about the side quests I've been on, my God. Did you get what the side keys quests also? have you been on? <sighs> There's this one with this troll in this nearby cave, and this guy named uh, um, uh, Krellero was there, and uh, apparently his son was murdered. Um, and uh, so we went to go avenge his son because I was promised there would be a hot meal and a lot of gold, and I couldn't help myself, and I was bored. Um, because you guys hadn't shown up yet. No one was here. And I thought, I'm just going to live here now. And so I was like, might as well make friends with the locals. And we went in, and it's not a troll. It's a kraken that we're fighting deep within the swamp of this, like, inside this cave, right? And Krellero is decapitated almost instantly. And I found out that the kraken liked bread, sort of by accident. So I had to spend the next two hours just dropping breadcrumbs and slowly inching out of the cave as its little tentacles. It was terrible, guys. It was horrible. And I didn't get any of the rewards, by the way. Do you think if you die in the game, you die in real life? I think this is uh, our bodies. I think we are here. So, yes. Do you want to test that out? Are you threatening me? No, I just I want to know the answer for sure. I was hoping maybe you'd be okay with that. <laughs> Killing myself? <laughs> You're asking me to commit suicide? In the video game. Here quick as well. No. No. How will Come you confirm on. that it happened or not? Pussy. Pussy. How will you, how will you confirm that it has Pussy. happened? Well, because if you, if you wake up outside the game, maybe you could get us out of there from there. No. Kill yourself today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, I refuse. I unequivocally refuse. Let's just kill the killer and hope. Why don't we convince the killer to dispel the brink? How about that? Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, so where is he at? Fine. Go turn in the fucking eggs, please. <laughs> we go and turn in the eggs to the NPC. Uh, as well he turns as the around ring. and uh, he's like, hello, travelers. Hello. We have the items from the thieves. They are gone. Did you know gone. that something's been stolen in town? The, the thieves are gone. The thieves are gone. Here's the items. And he ha holds out his hands. Dump items. Eggs. They disappear into his hands, and he goes back, and the staff appears in his hand again. Like, this is not an animation he's supposed to do. Um, and he reaches back into his, like, his back pocket, and he's like, and in his palm is uh, a key ring with a bunch of keys. And he's like, here are the keys to the city. And he keeps talking. He's just like, when my son was a young boy, he was killed by a majestic dragon. Take. Yeah, we take the keys and walk away. When I was a warrior in the Kingsguard, everything was getting pretty scary up at the castle. Uh, <laughs> it just fades into the distance as he just keeps talking. Um... <laughs> And you go back to Quick, and Quick's like, great, uh, let's go to the inn. Sure, what these, also, one of these keys is for the inn. It's funny, this is one of the songs that I picked sort of low-key as like Quick's theme, and it just kind of came up in the shuffle. Um, uh, uh, uh. I need to play the DLC for this. Same. Um, what did Do you say, by the way, Chance? 
Did you say which, something after he which said one of these keys is for the inn? Uh, quick like we just try them all. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. You try it, you find it, it opens. Um, Whoa. <laughs> well, actually, you go in the inn, no problem. It's an inn, so it's okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, is he you, in the inn? Do we see him like in the lobby? Um. What's his name again? No. Uh, Simon. Uh, I was gonna say Stephen. Him. That's a different guy. That's also a, in, an oh yeah, that's the character. guy from the yeah yeah yeah. Um yes. Uh, yes. There's an innkeep who's like, "Hello, gentlemen. Can I help you today?" We're looking for one of your uh customers. Wait, hang on. And he sets down the cup and the rag, and he's like. That didn't sound like a dialogue tree option. Are you real people? Are you yeah. real people? Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And he starts crying and he's like, oh, oh my God. It's been six months, you guys. Holy shit. Oh my God. How did you it's get so here? It's so good to see other people. <laughs> Rusty's <laughs> on the desk talking to him. And because of the game, we'll say he can understand. Sure. Uh, and it's like not any weirder than anything else that has happened to this guy over the mm. last six months. And he's like, hi. Wow. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, my name is Thomas. Um, I worked at Positech. And I guess wrong place, wrong time. I saw... Simon kill a guy and then I don't know I guess or a, a woman actually and then I guess I wasn't supposed to be in the grand plan or whatever so he just put me in this game and Jesus Christ at first it was like a haven for me you know like no consequences hang out have a good time but quickly I became very depressed well, anyway can did you see him come through here because he's supposed to be in your building right now I don't know. I just got on shift. My boss. Oh, yeah. I got like a normal job. It felt weird to not have a job. So I just like got a job. I just started my shift. I could ask the guy who was on before me. Or I just, I'll just check the guy, the log book. And he opens a book and a, a an option scroll wheel appears in front of him. And he like scrolls through it with his finger. And he's like, oh, he's here. Oh, wait, are you guys here to like hurt him? Yes. Good. Or just get out. You know. <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah, he's in room 32F. Would you like to help us? Uh, no. I'm kind what? of frightened of him, honestly. Maybe you just come along anyway, in case, you know, we get out of here and you're not left behind. He's gonna kill me, I think. Well, we won't let that happen. Come on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he just like sort of slowly follows you guys and he points you out to the room um, and um, you get to the room and you can feel an immense amount of uh, brink energy pouring out of it do what do you do you guys want to do you want to go in do we are we doing this I knock on the door and go housekeeping <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this was but two hours ago when this last happened to him <laughs> so he, he, he knows it's you guys and you just hear a, you just hear a shit and, uh, <laughs> uh, you hear shattered window crap uh, you know let's... maybe we don't do that no more <laughs> but it's fun quick quick is like god jesus christ and just, poof, and just kicks down the door <laughs> Um, and runs in bow drawn and looks around. He's like, yeah, he's out the window. I mean, obviously, but like, you know, and he puts the bow on his Shura, back and he's like, he's like, he's like, I, uh... oh, wait, that's a good idea. And he runs up to the window and draws string. And then he's like, oh, wait, my brink. God, I'm so out of whack right now. Um, uh, and the, uh, the bracelet like isn't working. So he's like, uh, oh, God. He pulls out a pocket knife and cuts his hand and then puts the blood on the arrow um, and says, bloody precision, draws the bow and and the arrow flies through the air and like curves around and you just hear a 
Gah! And he turns around and he's like, <laughs> and then he's like, let's go. <laughs> and he hops out of the window. Oh, do we just hop oh. out of the window? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Well, I mean, you I guess gather if they... quick is rather acrobatic. I'm, for some reason, I'm imagining this is on like a third story. It's the second story. Oh, damn. I don't want to jump out the window. I go down the stairs. That sounds awful. <laughs> uh, Polly, I'll I'll jump out after him. Uh, roll athletics for me. Yeah. Uh, fourteen. Uh, you hop out and you do a roll at the bottom safety roll, and you're you're just fine. <clears throat> Rusty, I, what I, are you doing? I'm gonna climb up the windowsill and I'm gonna jump out the window like flying squirrel <laughs> style. And hope that Polly catches me. <laughs> Do you say something to alert him that you're doing this? <laughs> Cowabunga. <laughs> Cowabunga. <laughs> um, you just hear that, Polly, and turn around. Um, Polly, <laughs> we'll take your earlier athletics roll. You're able to catch him just fine. Um, and uh, Quick is already making chase. Majestic. I follow uh, and, and hopefully chance, catch up. Chance, chance and Thomas, uh, you know, Chance exits the front door and Thomas is like, I'm not following. I'm staying here. All right, whatever, man. Thank you. Have fun in <laughs> video game land forever. No, maybe it'll be fine. I don't know. I'm really scared. And uh, he, you just leave without him. Um, no, I'm already gone. I didn't yeah, look back. Of course. Dude's uh, more of a coward than I am. I don't, I don't have time for that. <laughs> There's levels of cowardice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm higher up in the cowardice hierarchy. I don't respect <laughs> the lower, the lower cowards. Um, that's a good band name. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, there's like a the cowardice trail. hierarchy or the lower cowards? The lower cowards. Oh, okay. Fair <laughs> I like cowardice hierarchy too, though. Um, and there's a broken arrow on the ground and blood on it. And there's a trail of blood. Excuse me. You are and, excused. Uh, thank you. I knew you would say that. You are welcome. Uh, and um, you see the killer has sort of just posted up in the center of town and Quick is stopped about 20 feet from him. Uh, bow drawn. And Polly, you catch up to them right away. Um, and you're, you're, you know, it's up to you what you want to do next. And Chance, you're a little bit further behind. I'm just strolling. Let me ask you something. Hmm? If you didn't want us to find you in here, why did you bring us with you? Well, it's a little bit easier to fight here than in my office complex, I think you'll find. And, quite frankly, I know the game pretty well. I mean, I play it all the time. And he pulls up, he goes like this, and a huge inventory appears in front of him. And he starts, like, clicking a bunch of stuff. And Quick is like, end the fucking game right now, I swear to God, or I'm losing another arrow. And he's like, oh, that won't Hey, necessary. guys, what I miss? <laughs> <laughs> um, and as oh. you say that, Chance, uh, you see him, a blue light appears in his hand, he throws it on the ground, and... <clears throat> A guy appears Ugh. next to him, like a familiar. Oh, fuck. Um, um, how was there a guy? The shit. How was there a guy? <laughs> how is there a guy? How is there a guy? How is there a guy? <laughs> the classic. Um, and it is, uh, it's this guy who has, like, he's got red hair tied back in a ponytail. And he has a black cloak and he's holding a katana. Uh, he has a sheathed katana. And uh, he has black eyes, and he just stands next to to Simon, uh, and he unsheaths his sword, and it becomes enveloped in flame. Um, and I'm then, backing up. I'm running. And then, actually, uh, Simon um, does some other stuff and pulls out just a war hammer, and is holding it on his back, and the menu disappears, uh, and he just says, "Okay, guys, you ready to die?" Not yet. Uh, How do I do that too? <laughs> uh roll initiative please i i yeah <laughs> oh okay well 
Also, Paul, I need to remind you, this is the guy that killed your sister. Yeah. 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 Uh, Rusty. 16. Thank you. 16, you said? Chance. Five. Five. Polly. 13. Okay, Rusty, you're up first. Oh. Um, and the layout of the battlefield is uh, quick, Polly with Rusty on the shoulder, and then Chance, and then 20 feet in front of you guys is uh, this sort of henchman guy and uh, Simon. I see. Um, kind of wish I had stayed with Thomas. That was his name, right? Yeah. I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you done goofed. I, um... Let's start with all I know. I'm gonna hop off the shoulder and charge forward and bite. Jump. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> um, um, yes. Let's see. Let's see how that goes. Does also, a... for what it's worth, Brink's work here. As you just saw from Quick, Brink's work in here. Right. But the bracelets don't. Correct. But um, you are... I mean, you've seen now, like, there are other... There's the classic way. Right. Um. Anyway, yes, who are you biting? Um. The familiar... Okay. Uh, roll to hit, please. 15... Oh, sorry, 19. That hits. Excellent. That is for uh, nine damage. Nice. Nice. That was 20 feet forward, you said? Yes. So I'll run my remaining 15 movement speed back. Okay. And sit in front of the party. Uh, you bite him and he sort of video game reacts. He's like, Ugh. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, but doesn't really react. Does he have a health um, bar? Yes. Um, uh, it goes down a, almost a sixth, it looks like. And I'll use my bonus action, Helpful, um, and I'll use it on Polly. So you get advantage on your next attack roll, or advantage on a saving throw or something. I can use that, whatever. An ability check, it, whatever your next one is before my turn comes up again. Oh, okay. Um, great. Uh, after Rusty is Polly. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to first yell out to Simon and be like, you made those zombies, yeah? Zombies feels like somewhat of a degradation of the quality of them, but yes, those are mine. Why did you kill Frankie? Well, I had to send a message somehow, and it seemed like she had brink potential, so those were the orders. And women are more my type, you know what I mean? Oh, that that sets him off. He's he's gonna try to charge past the the extra dude he, who he summoned. Go straight for Simon. Uh, you can do it in a way that you won't go through his space, um, because they're side by side, not front and back. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can go straight to uh. Simon, um, let's get some let's get some proper music and let's get that S and D. Whoa. Wow, it's a good thing we're not doing campaign one or campaign two right now. All the Dark Souls music is off Spotify. Wow, that's that's ninety percent of the uh, campaign one and campaign two boss playlist. Yes. Okay, we'll use this instead. But they still have Bloodborne. That's so weird. Yeah, that is really strange. Maybe it's maybe because Bloodborne is Sony published. Maybe. Weird. That's yeah, so sad. Dark actually. Souls is Dark Souls is Bandai Namco. Bandai Namco. Yeah. Mm. Dumb. Yay laws. <laughs> um. All right, Polly. What are you doing? All right. Uh. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to go get at him from the opposite side of the ninja dude. Great. Uh. And I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna go straight for. Uh, punch to the head. Sure. That is a 20. And you also add the thing, not that it matters, right? From, uh, from... Oh, it was Rusty. advantage, right? Advantage? 
Rusty? Uh, yes, with advantage. So roll again for a crit. Okay, not a crit. Okay, yeah, you hit. Total. You hit. Okay. Uh, and I will roll damage, and damage is a six. Okay. Um, make sure, by the way, that when your ability scores go up, you're scaling your weapon damage and stuff. Yep. Great. Um, excellent. So, yeah, you do six damage. You just... A quick right uh, jab. Does he still have the inventory face. open? No. Hmm. Uh, he closed it right as the fight began. Um, and uh, he he turns, and there's blood starting to come out of his nose. And he just turns back and looks at you and just smiles. Uh, and you see his health bar deplete um, by what looks like... It's about a similar percentage to what happened for the other guy. Um, right. Is that your turn? All right, Quick is wasting no time. Uh, Quick is like... Quick's like, cool, everybody, new running theory. If we just kill him, maybe it'll all stop. Just target that guy. And he turns and just uh, looses another arrow um, that he had pre-bled onto. Um, And uh, let me read this to be sure of how it works. Um... Yes, he is within range, so he does not need to roll. Um, and it's a bow. Let's do it this way. Long bow, 5e. I need, should have pulled this up before, but that's okay. Five plus five is 10. He does 10 damage. To Simon. The arrow mm. strikes Simon uh, in the side and goes through him. It's like, mm. and it's, and he clasps at his side and then looks up and is like, <laughs> and blood is like oozing out of his side. Um, yes, five plus five equals ten. Uh, and this True. time you saw a significant chunk of his health bar mm. go down. Um, and then. Uh, Quick is like, it's going to take me some time to make more arrows. Or rather, to like prepare more arrows. Um, and he backs up a little bit. And then it is, after Quick, is their turn. Uh, and the NPC guy, the familiar, ditches the scabbard, or the, the sheath, and holds the flaming blade out in front of him and like prays into it. And he's like, by the grace of a trainu, I use my blade to scourge those who would wrong my master. And the flame <laughs> grows. And he pulls it to his side and goes like this. And then like, <laughs> is like gone. And then appears at chance and oh. slices up at you. I dodge out of the way perfectly. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that uh, does a 20 hit you. Yeah, yes. Uh, okay. That is... Is that a 6 or a 1? 6. 10 plus... Uh, you take 17 damage. Cool, that's great. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you resist fire damage or slashing damage, but those I... are the two relevant types of damage. No. <laughs> it is actually probably worth checking your armor to see if it resists slash. A leather jacket. Actually, um, I don't think I'm wearing armor. No, we gave you the, the armor that um, mimicked your clothing. Do I have to wear it because it's like story-wise, it's brink- infused or whatever yeah but it is oh, designed okay. to look like your clothing okay because uh, i get on. a big buff if i don't have armor on the leather jacket does not uh I, i'm oh, you also get a buff not with, wearing armor i chose you not get to a buff it. without armor yeah I then, get yeah in game we can logic that it's fine okay. uh that's fine it's yeah, your my armor class surrounding is, you without armor my armor class is 16 okay yeah 
Sure. So yeah, don't worry about it. I'm so charismatic <laughs> that things bounce off of me. This is quite literally what it is. It's a charisma modifier that gives me my armor class. Nice. It's stupid. It's uh, like that TikTok of the guy giving the charisma buff during the, the boss fight. <laughs> Just playing right. a guitar. Yeah, he's playing like a lute, like jamming out, and you know, the knight's over there like... <laughs> um, excellent. So you take, what did I say, 17? Yeah, 17 yeah. damage. Yep. Um, and as he strikes Chance, the flame like <clears throat> wafts into the air, and then he turns and... <clears throat> but Chance, you get an attack of opportunity as he moves, moves out of your space. Ooh. Well, I was thinking about maybe blowtorching somebody, but I don't think I should blowtorch the fire guy. Uh, so I'll just, not. I'll just uh, swing with my flail. Okay. My stolen, fl my flail. Frida, my, my, flail. my flail. Um, how does hitting work again? I forget. Roll a d20 and did it's I send so you the flail information? It's been so long since I've actually attacked. Yes, I have it. Yeah, d20 plus probably strength or dexterity, one of the two. Uh, um, that would be 12. That does not hit. Yay. So you swing with the flail and he ducks and then like, it, it, it almost seems like he's like teleporting and then he's up at Polly. Polly, that is a miss. Um, and uh, that is his turn. And now Simon's gonna go. Simon's right up in Polly's face. Simon is just gonna collect Brink Energy in his fist and punch. Polly, does a 25 hit you? Nah. Oh, yeah? Nah. Um, you take... Uh, please make a strength saving throw for me, please. Uh-huh. Uh... I think because I could use... Uh, you take here. nine damage, by the way. Um... I'm debating whether or not to use an adrenaline die. You know what? I'll use one. I'll use an adrenaline die to buff my roll. Ooh, very nice. Uh, 19. You fail. Oh, shit! <laughs> um, it is DC oh, wait, wait, 20. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry, I didn't add my actual strength saving throw modifier also. I just added my dice, to my two things okay. together. So it's 24. You succeed. Okay, uh, So good. you just take, you just take the nine damage. Okay. Um, and you are Must not- be nice. You are not blown backwards. Uh, and, uh, then Simon is just gonna punch you again. Okay. That misses. Um, so he punches you once, hits, punches again, and misses. Um, and then maybe punches a third time and misters. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, after that is no. Chance. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm bleeding out of every artery I have and also burned half to death. <laughs> uh, I would... <laughs> I guess, oh man, I don't even know. What would, what, um, hmm. Oh, can I try that, uh, can I try my Lucky Sevens thing to make a toy soldier appear in, um, what's his name, Simon? Make a toy soldier appear in Simon's head. In his head? Yeah, in his head. What do you mean by in his head? Like, I roll d6 seven times i have to get a one and a six and then i can make anything that i've stolen appear anywhere that i can see i think you can make it appear in his mouth but i don't think you can make it i don't think you can make it appear inside of his i would argue you can't see the inside of his head. okay oh well then here how about instead of that you know where you could i put, put a welder's mask in his wound the arrow wound I was just about to say this. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to try and do lucky sevens into his arrow wound with a Let's see it. You know what? Let's use one of the 25 records I yoinked. We'll put a record inside of him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um uh by the way, uh yes. you you two things. One, you're going to have to get Oh, you already you already have an open wound, so you're fine. Yeah, um, I just, that's yeah, that's kind of energy pat myself down out. and rub say my hands and say the words, baby. Uh, lucky sevens. Pockets, lucky sevens. Great. There's one. Oh, three. Now I got a one. That's my second roll. Another three. 
A five. How many is that? Two more. Two more rolls. Two more. A two. Come on, six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Um, you uh. I take concentrate. the record. I yeah. I know how to do it. I Great, take please. the record out of one pocket, and then I put it in the other, mm. and that's what makes it appear. Uh, it appears inside of his wound, and it, like, it's instant. It doesn't, like, grow in or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just there, and it because it's an open cavity, it makes the space, and it slices and compresses his intestines, uh, and blood bursts out of the wound, and he takes, Jesus, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll a d20, and that's how much damage he's going to take. All right, that sounds good. Chase, what the hell was that? 16. Nice. Um, I just really close lean in into Polly's ear and go, pockets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he takes 16 damage. Uh, and his health bar is like at two thirds where it was, and this like halves it. And he's like, Argh! Argh! And he and pulls it out and then snaps it over his knee and throws Huey the record Lewis to the in the ground. news, no! <laughs> <laughs> it's also what I say when they don't play my favorite song at the concert. <laughs> Huey Lewis in the news, no! How come it... I don't understand why every song they play isn't hip to be square. Come why don't on. they just play that song over Patrick and over? Patrick Bateman loves that one. Um, hey, and, Paul. <laughs> hey, Paul. Let's see Paul Allen's open wound. Um, he takes uh, he takes one damage <laughs> from pulling it out as well. Oh, no, we I all. very much so appreciated that. <laughs> no problem. Let's see Paul Allen's open wound. <laughs> oh, that's great. She starts sweating. <laughs> Let's see Paul Allen's open wound. Um, is that your turn? Or I guess, yeah, yeah is oh. that your turn, Chance? Uh, I'm gonna inspire Rusty with a bonus oh. action. What do you I say? I love this inspire move. It's great. I'm gonna say, hey, Rusty, uh, go, hi. go put that butter knife in that bad man. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> Uh, excellent. You have that inspiration now. I'm so happy. Uh, so what is I'm, that? What is that for? Just for the hits, right? Let me read it for you, because I don't remember the specifics of how you can use it. Uh, one inspiration die, a d6. Once within the next 10 minutes, creature can roll the die and add the number rolled to one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw it makes. You can wait until it, you roll the d20 before deciding to use it, but must but decide before, before say. the GM says whether the roll succeeds or fails. Great. Um, at this point, by the way, the townsfolk have, like, cleared. It yes. is just you guys, and the, the, the snow is lightly falling still, uh, and it starts to pick up a little bit, and it's getting quite frigid. Um, There's no, like, bugged-out NPC asking us to find the <laughs> yeah, statue the stolen guard, from the city. The, the guard <laughs> walks up and is like, there have been thieves in the city. <laughs> and he's, he's asking this right as the flame sword comes up and it decapitates him. And he's like going like this and his head rolls on the ground. He's like, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> and then just yeah. disperses into pixels. Um, okay, great. Uh, after chance is Rusty. Okay. Um, so what, what's the scope of everything right now? How far so is Chance from Pauly me? Polly is, Polly is being flanked, uh, in front by Simon and behind him by this other guy. Um, and, uh, Chance is a little bit further behind. Um, no, I walked up to Polly to whisper in his ear. <laughs> so you're right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He asked a question, I had to answer it. I was so excited about the ability working for the first time that I put myself in danger to tell him what it was. Great, so they're all right there and Quick is backed up and aiming and uh, you're a little bit like 15 or 20 feet back. 
Okay. Well, uh, that makes this part a little bit easier for me to manage then. Um, I'm going to run to chance, and I'm going to be able to use my medicinal knowledge. It's the first time I've been, been able to use this. Um, to... You have medicinal knowledge? I sure do. The rat went to med school. Rusty is a field medic, as it turns out. Um, and I'm going to use my medicinal knowledge to administer a quick fix on chance. So I get to roll. I have like a, a set pool of medicinal dice. I'm going to use four of them. Oh. And I rolled 18 divided by two is nine plus my wisdom is 10. So you gain 10 hit points. Hell yeah. Nice. Um, and then inspired by Chance's words to stick my butter knife in the bad man. I'm going to do that too. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I, since since uh, had, had Doc, since Mamba's not here, I'll say it even though it wasn't an attack. Multi-attack. Multi-attack. Um, yeah, so it does a 18 hit. Right, who are you attacking? <laughs> um, Simon. Yes, it hits. Excellent. Those multi-attacks are coming at level 5. We're pretty close. Put that knife in that bad man. You'll level up at the end of this episode, too. Nice. I'm telling you, the power scaling. We're, we're prepping for something big. Fu isn't oh, leveling man. up, though, because she's not doing anything this episode. <laughs> Zing! Wow! <laughs> Got her. No, we're only boys halfway club, through. Boys club. He's boys only club. Through. Boys club. Wow! Uh, Fu, we'll be we'll be back to you very soon, Fu. I'm sorry. Fine. It's fine. Whatever. Cool. Here. Um. All right. So, <laughs> Rusty, how much damage? Eight. Nice. Uh, his health is but a sliver now. Okay, and then I will. Um, I suppose be helpful once again as a bonus. Wait, no, I guess I already did a bonus action by I healing. I think so, yeah. So never mind. I will resume my position on Polly's shoulder then and Great. await further things to Polly, happen. Polly, it is your turn. All right. Despite the sliver of a health bar, Polly wants to absolutely demolish this dude. Mm. Uh, so Polly's going to crouch low. I think he's like right in front of me, right? Yeah. He's going to crouch low and jump and grab his waist at the same time as he says gravity schmavity and like bites his <laughs> lip uh oh, to make and, blood come yeah yeah uh and I'm gonna send gravity at minus two for both of us what while i'm jumping to get some extra oomph uh can you roll strength against simon for me please uh well he Oh, just for the for the grab for the grapple. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is this just a straight roll? Do I add my yeah, modifier? Yeah, roll a roll a strength with modifier. The roll okay, D twenty yeah. with strength modifier. Nineteen. <clears throat> yeah, you win. Okay. By um, one, by the way, he got eighteen. Oh, and then he must make a wisdom saving for gravity schmavity. What's the DC? Well, he got a seven. Great. Not very wise. This all worked or out just perfectly. <laughs> uh, he's not very wise right now. <laughs> and uh, so we're we're going up. <laughs> Taking the elevator. And so am I. I'm like, oh, are you so on my you... shoulder? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but he doesn't have minus two, so he's like... <laughs> I'm like <laughs> flying upwards while being pulled. Down. That's great because that's minus two, right? Yeah. So, so that's uh, so double Rusty's, terminal Rusty, velocity up. Rusty is experiencing three G's downwards, <laughs> <laughs> which is like what it feels like to go on the drop on a roller coaster. Rusty's ooh, just like being pressed in. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm about it. Rusty, Rusty schmusty. <laughs> What uh, what are you doing now, Polly? What are you doing with this? Uh, well, we're we're up in the air. That's my turn. I, I don't know how long we we go up for, but let's just finish I... it right now. Let's just oh, finish it now. All right. Falling well, into video game space. Yeah. Well, then I was gonna. You I reach to... an invisible wall. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna use my second instance of gravity schmavity. To, to plow him downwards? To give him plus two down. 
Let's and do then it. Me, I'll roll again. Me plus like point one. To go slowly down. Yeah. Great. Let's do it. I'm gonna roll the wisdom save. Okay. What's the DC? Twelve. He fails again. Oh boy. So to clarify, what has happened is Pauly grabs around this guy who is bleeding to death, launches the two of them upwards very quickly, just poof, like what, 20 feet into the air? Um, and then plows him downwards. So now he is also accruing. They get to the zenith, so they hit zero meters per second. And then let's actually, just for the sake of it, I'll do the math this once. Um, we'll find out how fast this guy's going. <laughs> this guy's using his degree. No way. No way, dude. Okay, so we're going to do with distance. So let's do VF squared equals VO squared plus 2A delta X. Uh, his initial velocity is zero. That's easy. Final velocity is what we're looking for. So square root of, what'd you say, two times gravity? Two times gravity, yeah. How high up was he in the first place, though? Because he went at minus, minus basically 20 meters per second. But isn't upwards. there a limit to your brakes? Yeah, yeah, and it stops at, it stops at 30 feet above him. So he was okay. accelerating up, he was accelerating for 30 feet, for like 10 meters, basically, at minus 20 meters per second for 10 meters. Okay. Um, so actually, it works the same both ways. It's the same equation twice. Yeah. Um, so. So basically, his speed when we when he hits that uh, will be the same speed at the top. Yeah. It'll be the same either way. Exactly. Um. There's two unknowns, so this would be more difficult. So I'm just gonna estimate the delta x. Probably like I don't know if you fall for we'll say it was five seconds. Oh, I'll just use time. I'll just use time. Uh, so, delta x equals one half. Funny. How long do we think he went up? Four seconds? Yeah, probably around there. Okay, he went up, according to this napkin math, 160 meters. <laughs> 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 which for reference <laughs> is an eighth of a mile <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, or sorry a tenth of a mile pardon me um, uh, <laughs> so he went up a tenth of a mile so then 160 on the way down holy shit dude <laughs> Uh, he is going 80 meters per second when he hits the ground. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a lot of meters. This is for Frankie. <laughs> uh, uh, the speed of sound is 340 meters per second. Um, <laughs> when he hits the ground, he's going 180 miles an hour. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so this dude it's is like some missed. Dragon Ball Z stuff. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, exactly. The shit where it's like it makes a crater, yeah, and then it makes a crater, <laughs> and then it makes a crater. <laughs> so they yeah. literally soar up into the sky and then, and like sonic booms do, 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 appear as he goes down. Uh. Just like lifeless bodies flailing. Can <laughs> 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 hey, you do the flailing again? The ground uh, fissures yeah. into like chunks. <laughs> yeah, the ground. <laughs> Uh, and he just becomes pancake. And Polly is like, Polly's like to the ground. <laughs> I, I almost certainly take damage at one tenth gravity, also from 160 meters in the air. <laughs> yeah, let's find out how fast you're going. Flip this that was, two this was to a very point much one. Not a self-preservation move. Have you has your character ever done a self preservation move? No. No. Not once. No. He was very angry. I, mean, I, I think the first thing we did was I hotwired a car and you just started jumping over them. 
Uh, you're going mm. 40 miles an hour when you hit the ground. Okay. Oh, shit. It hurts. Yeah. But wait. But wait. Let's say that he's falling so slowly that he can skydive it. Yeah, I mean, Wind what I'm not what I am not accounting for here is air resistance. To be very to be very fair, we'll say the atmosphere is very viscous. Uh, <laughs> oh, how convenient! <laughs> and uh, you know, because our boy was penciling, obviously, and you're 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 going. We'll say you take. He was I'm going. Gonna, it's still like you're still doing like thirty miles an hour. Do you Simon was going so fast that oh. he could not do anything but pencil. Don't give me any any handouts here. I want the there damage. There we go. I solved the uh, I solved the mystery. <laughs> Put the flailing right in the thumbnails. <laughs> just <laughs> just an image of a death. Please, please, Richard. Uh, that's Max. <laughs> I don't. I, that will kill your character. <laughs> Do it. Okay. <laughs> Give me the number. It, it, it might not, but it's. You think uh, I'm gonna go negative, negative max health? Well, it's possible. Um, in five e, apparently, how you calculate fall damage is every twenty feet is a d six. Yeah. And we've eclipsed, and the max is one hundred and twenty feet, which is, uh, or I guess it's sixty six. Hang on, let me reread this again. Let's take a break. I'm going to solve this during the break, and we'll come back. Bated breath, does Polly live or not? I gave him um, a kinematics question, so we got to go to a break. Uh, give me a second here. We're going to take a quick break. Please get up, stretch your legs, get some water. We'll be back in just a few minutes. When we come back, we'll learn how much damage Charizard's seismic toss actually did. <laughs> See you. Squeegee. <laughs> a weird thing to say right as we come back patrick that's strange <laughs> um you good how i've, you okay? de how I've decided to do this <laughs> we'll go back to speedrunners and dragons <laughs> um how i've decided to do this is the maximum fall damage you can take at any one time is 20 d6 um and so yeah Cade is correct in that that's like a whole turn right so then it would like you would have a turn to react or whatever how i've decided to do this is i'm just gonna have the 20 i rolled 20 d6 i have a number i'm gonna take a little bit off of it on the pretense that you uh well it's 20 d6 but you're falling more slowly 10 times more slowly Mm. Yeah, but it's not linear. It's the square root of ten. So it's. But I'm also um, way higher than than the maximum amount, right? So like, I'm not hitting terminal velocity for a while. So I could still take that twenty two six probably. Yeah, just to sort of even things out, I'm gonna do nineteen d six instead. Oh, how okay. um, no, nice! Easy. I don't know, just because it doesn't like, sound very even. Just because like there's air resistance and like it's slower, so it should be. If it's the square root of 10, it's like one, a factor of one, which is 10%. Um, so 10% lower would be... It's like a little more than six. So what I rolled was 66. 66 um, damage? Yes. Okay. I'm going to take off seven. Okay. So 59. Okay. I, uh, I am knocked to zero HP. However, uh, as a headstrong daredevil, I have a feature called resilience, where when I am knocked out one time per long rest, I get to be at one HP instead of zero. Ooh, wow. Wait, that's so overpowered. That's so sick. Also, I'd like to respect um, Hawkwing's joke here. Polly lasagna turned into Polly pancake. Um, <laughs> I really like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, you take... So it wouldn't have mattered how much damage you took. Unless... It's your unless, max. Unless it was negative max, then I'd die instantly. Okay. 60 is a lot of damage to take at once. Probably the only other time somebody's taken that much damage 
in a single stroke a player character in any of my campaigns are either when Grum was torn asunder by <laughs> yeah. uh, Talk Thun at the end of campaign one. I don't know how I pulled that name out of my ass. I uh, wouldn't have, abs I wouldn't have even recognized it unless uh, I had the context. Or maybe he when, me? um, maybe when uh, Jader or Danith, one of them in the in the Tournament of Champions, got like absolutely fucked. I can't remember what exactly happened, but something happened there. Was it described as torn asunder then too? Well, I'm nothing if not consistent. Um, uh, so yeah, quick question. He tore me everywhere from the ass under. <laughs> ass under. Oh yeah, for... Rusty. Yeah, uh... hi. What happens to Rusty? <laughs> At the very last moment, as I'm falling, I you have a talk. turn to react because you fall more than what is normal, Polly. You fall more than one turn's worth of falling, so you do have time to react. Mm -hmm. I throw Rusty upward as I land to counteract some of the speed. <laughs> the whiplash, bro. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> <"Whoa!"> <laughs> <laughs> Fucking neck is gonna snap. <laughs> He's a rat. He's made of liquid. So Smaller creatures do, it, by the laws of nature, take less damage IRL for falling. Yes, That's thing. and there is the realistic thing of, like, you can't be falling any faster than Polly, even though you should, in theory, because your weight doesn't matter. It's just your surface area and the acceleration, and you're experiencing normal gravity. However, you're on Polly's shoulders. So you're falling at the same speed as him. If you're falling slower than him, you would lift, but you're falling faster, so you stay with him. Um, and if he throws you upwards, I mean, the whiplash is a, we'll say the brink energy protects you from the whiplash on the throw. <laughs> uh, and then we'll just do your fall damage from wherever you fall from, which is going to be like, I don't know, Polly, roll strength on the throw. This All is right. not a controlled <laughs> throw. Uh, 11. This is, by the way, a four-second exchange that has taken 15 minutes to solve. That's great. <laughs> don't you um, love gravity schmavity? Don't you want to? Don't you want to redo all the math, knowing that Rusty's weight is also pushing down on Polly? It's so minimal, though. Oh, but you gotta, you gotta fine tune it. It's so minimal. <laughs> it's a good point, but it's it's a really good point actually. But it's very minimal because he's so light. Um, that's a really good point actually. What a weird I, physical I concept. triggered Clay's math brain again. I actually don't know <laughs> I saw it how... He's like, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> the free body diagram is weird, though, because two objects that are right next to each other accelerating differently like that is so strange. Anyway, I'm not going to do it. Um, Ooh, the air resistance and the aerodynamics. Stop it. He throws... Stop it. He throws Rusty upwards with a strength roll of 11. We'll say he goes... I don't know, he's so light. Uh, I threw like a baseball with half my strength while I'm falling downwards. I feel like I would counteract counteract the falling, what was it, 80 miles an hour? What, at 40? <laughs> no, 40 miles an hour, you counteract that, and then I'd say, well, if he threw you at 40 miles an hour, you would just stop in place. Exactly, how fast do you think Polly could throw a baseball? Are you throwing like this? Yeah, underhand. I don't know, like 30 miles an hour. All right, so I threw him up 15 miles an hour. Wouldn't that mean that I don't go up at all? No, but you hit the ground more slowly. Yeah, so you fall from like an initial velocity of 10. At How, how close to the ground are you throwing him? Like as close as I can before I hit, basically. Great, I'm just going to roll a d10. All right. <laughs> you take six damage, Rusty. Ow. That was that extra die from the instead of 19. Yeah, there you that go. That was the 20th die right there. All right, this fucking segment is over. <laughs> um, Let it be known, I did so, not request math. So All Polly I did was hit do the a ground. Cool move. Polly hit the ground at 80 miles an hour after using two times the Earth's gravity or the video 40, game's 40 gravity. 40 miles an hour. He hit it 40, 40 miles an hour after using two times the video game's gravity to pulp the enemy the and killer then, 
and then got up injured but fine but because bones. he's such a headstrong daredevil yes yep. this is all true yes. god what a what a fucking chad um <laughs> and as moly. you start to stand up the game starts stand to up like, like the framework of the game starts to disintegrate around you and the the inn disappears and thomas is like thank god um and it all starts to shrink around you and then suddenly you're out in the real world again uh, and you have all your spell slots brink energy health everything is back oh oh okay thank god i got my spell slots i'm glad we did all that math well if it would have killed him um the uh the antagonist of the first arc of this campaign is is dead wild is he still like a pancake on the ground in front of us yeah what appears before you is just a pool of blood and guts hey bye guys squeegee i have a squeegee right here how how convenient i just how convenient i just squeegee away the evidence Um, all right, and now we don't have to listen to squeegee. Skyrim music anymore. That's what I'm in a video game sound because so. it's a rusty squeegee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you look up at the clock, and it appears as though only like 20 minutes has passed, even though you were in the game for hours. Um, and Quick is there too, and Quick's bow is gone. Like everything you brought from the game is gone. Is the bartender there? Uh, what'd you say, Paulie? What about the other guy? Ian? That. The guy Thomas? who was there. Stuck. Yeah, there? Thomas is Thomas is there. Um, and he's just in the corner, like, weeping. Um, <laughs> so happy to be in his office. And he's like, I gotta check on my wife! Uh, how, so how long was he in the game? Real world time, if it was uh, six real months. Real world time, he was in the game. He was in real life, he was gone six months. In the oh. game, you were gone 20 minutes, which turned into two hours. So it scales at 6x. So he was in there for 36 months or three years. <laughs> Wait, isn't it the opposite? He was in there for one month. No, video game time. No, no, no. Video is game str stretches. Stretched. So 10 minutes in the real world is an hour in the game. Hyperbolic time chamber. Yeah, I thought you said he was in the game for six months. No, in no. He time. was in real world gone for six months. Oh, shit. When you, when you introduced us, it was... Did I say six months in-game? I meant six months out of game. Mm. Sorry. He was there for like three, three years. years. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. Okay. That's almost as long as Kung Fu's been off the stream. <laughs> <laughs> she can stay on the layout. Um, I'm alive. Uh, quick. Quick looks around and he's like, Thanks, guys. Couldn't have done that without you. Polly, that was insane shit, dude. Yeah, well, he killed my sister, so. Yeah, that, fair. Let, that, let it be known. That's what happens when you mess with me. Yeah, fair. I mean, and I get real close to Polly. I go, yeah, I'm with him. Um, And suddenly, uh, Rusty, your, your pager or whatever, the, a phone begins to ring somewhere, and Rusty picks it up. Because um, Rusty's the communicado person. Um, and uh, it's Ryan. And... This is Morpheus. Or no, it's not Begin Ryan, walking sorry. down the aisle now. <laughs> There's a woman in front of you. Um, Morpheus <laughs> drinking a 40 in a death basket. Uh, what? No Eric Andre show enjoyers? Okay. Hmm. Um, Rusty, uh, it's Dr. Sam, and she says, um, uh, something's going down at Madison Square Garden. You guys got to get there right away and support Lexi and Ryan. Uh, okay, Will. Where were you? Uh, well, I don't know if I can even describe it. What happened? Did you get the killer? <laughs> he, oh, he's dead, all right. We squeegeed him up real he's, good. He's dead. Oh, Did yeah. you say you squeegeed him? Yes. Okay. I'll explain later. It'll make okay. more sense later. Okay, just go to Madison Square Garden. Riley's Roger. there. All right. Um, and uh, yeah, great, sure. Um, <laughs> Lexi and Ryan are Lexi. Where do you think you would wait for them? Um, I would 
think we would go not on the security office, probably down near that um locked at like the the entrance that I okay. where uh, Max is posted up. Yeah, I think we're just kind of chilling there to hear, see if there's anything like coming out from the inside, and then I'll be waiting for them. Okay. Um, actually, really quick before we before we fast travel, uh, quick. Seems a little conflicted about what to do next, um, and he uh, <clears throat> he starts walking out of the office ahead of you guys while you're still on the phone. I uh, I call out to him. He's still within your shot. Yeah. Yo, do you want to come with us or not? I don't really want to make enemies of people who've been paying me. I'm not going to work for them anymore. I mean, that's the deal we made. I'm a man of my word, but I don't know. He seems like really conflicted. If and he keeps to, walking. If you come to this hospital place we've been going through, they could probably teach you something about the brink. We've been learning a lot. He turns around and he says, No, I, uh, Look, I'll give you a piece of information as a little, uh, <clears throat> a thank you. Riley has something. I don't know what it is, but he has some kind of trump card that he hasn't shown yet. I don't know what it is, but just be careful. Roger. And he turns back around and leaves. Hey, remember to not ever uh, shoot us made a deal <laughs> thumbs up as he walks away god scary motherfucker <laughs> um and uh now blah, uh we you arrive in madison square garden and lexi and ryan are waiting there for you um and ryan's like hey guys what's uh what's going on you look a little flustered what took you oh uh, we've just been in a video game Polly pile drived a guy into a pancake. That's it great. Was like, sick. We're here in real life, like right next to the person who wants to kill everybody. It felt pretty real to me. Yeah, we played yeah, Harry he really for killed him. We were like, in a video reality game, but he or something? really killed him. Yeah, but like just reality. Ryan's like, wait, wait, wait. wait. You mean you were like sucked into the game? Yeah. yeah. Heard that. And then, and then I made, this I made was a, the, at the killer's I, place. Yeah. 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 I made a, uh, Huey Lewis in the news album appear in an open wound caused by a hired gun that was also trapped in a video game with us. And then Polly switched gravity to make the bad man go up in the air and then back down into the earth. And he became a literal pile of blood and the video game disappeared. And now here we're here. Hi. So the killer is dead. The killer is killed. If he's not dead, I don't know what he is. And not just in a video game. No, in real. Good, yes. That's good. Right? Yeah. Yes. Did right. you inform the authorities about this? I don't think they'd ever be able to find this guy. <laughs> we, we all just silently go... <laughs> nah. Okay. This no. is not a life I grew up with. Um, okay, so Riley's in there, by the way. Yeah, oh yeah, right. Um, uh, Riley's in there with some guy I can't really tell based on the security cameras, and there's a bunch of guards. They're planning something. I say we should get in there. Wait, so Riley, the big bad guy. Yes. Yes. And you're scared, right? Well, just insofar as all of us together should be fine. Should be. Yeah. Now, we didn't want to go alone, but maybe we could formulate a plan? How well would everyone but me do, do you think? I think you like, would be if a you welcome all went addition. Together. You just described almost killing a man by putting something inside of him. I think you are a welcome addition to the team. No, you like run away from stuff, me, but we literally won't go in without you, so. That, uh, uh, I mean, that sounds better to me. I would <laughs> like that. 
if none of us went in so then he'll we just... were in a video game where we had to murder someone in but real he's life he's gonna come after us and i assume try to kill us anyway okay fine we just fine, do something about it fine maybe there's some cool stuff inside i don't know yes, i just i oh god i don't want to we're letting you in madison square garden if i turn a blind eye you know there's stuff everywhere uh... you could get some uh new york knicks merchandise merch? oh but that's that's it's 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 wasting money taking up inventory space and i have nothing but inventory space <laughs> oh you, you could get little a little uh statue of liberty okay i'll go in <laughs> okay um <laughs> uh, you, you the the five of you the five of you go in um, I guess we're just like, yeah, where's Mamba's? Mamba? Yeah, where's Mamba? That's about what I was about to say. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> you see, we just hear from around a corner. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, okay. He's close by. Uh, so, yeah, the, you're you're able to get into Madison Square Garden, the same door as always, or that you had just used. And uh, we're going to switch playlists a little bit here. There's only, like, one dude in here. I don't know how this place isn't better... And there's nothing to take. Um, <laughs> no <laughs> chances of losing his mind. Uh, what are you gonna sit in a seat and watch nothing? <laughs> um, uh, Ryan's like, I say we just go in straight in there and front him. Yeah, if he's that planning something, we should stop it. We need Did to play anything too. else about whatever those machines were. That's where you were, right? Uh, Lexi, do you remember what had happened last time? I can tell you if you don't remember. Last time, what? What the machines do. Machines. Um. Bad memory. Uh, it was. It was like Doctor Rell thinks it's something teleportative, like it, right. Tele yeah. We didn't see them in with any machine parts. Security camera. No. Somebody asked me. I'm sorry. Uh, Polly. Oh, Polly. He, there was something about teleportation. It was hard to, to understand everything at once because we had to look at at a time. And then, and then, and then, everyone. Did you know Doctor Rell has a brink? Got my wit sent here. She can get really small. She's lied to everybody. So let's figure out who we can trust, I guess, from now on. That's surprising to me. First time I'm hearing of it. Right? Was, has, so, Rusty, has she, like, ever acted strange or anything besides her whole, like, weird obsession about certain things? Uh, Rusty, you recall that, I mean, she's, a, she's an eclectic woman, but nothing, like, exorbitant uh nothing unbelievable um this is definitely first time for everything uh and ryan says guys i hate to break this up but we are wasting precious time that never happens on this show <laughs> no hey let's uh make a plan and go in because i can oh sure yeah what's the plan well, okay, so um, I assume that we should all get close to the entrance of the actual stadium. Yeah. That was like a minute to work. Um, uh, so, right, everyone, do we want to go in all together or maybe split on separate sides? Go in and throw them off guard? What are we, we expecting when we get in there? I just got here. I don't know. I don't even want to be in here. Uh, it's like it's like six armed guys, those sort of like henchmen guys you fought a couple times, um, and Riley, who is concentrating on something, and some kind of guard, some kind of like other guy. Hey, we're gonna... We can see this? It was we're... seen on security cameras. We're going to go in on two teams on either side. Uh, catch them off guard. So I'll take Max and... Uh... Polly, come with me. Then, Ryan, you keep an eye on Chance. You can take Rusty. I'm okay with that. I'll go with the concrete on Ryan's shoulder. <laughs> Not on mine. Good call. I'll take, so I'll be with Loud Man here, and he can get their attention. Then you all went, go in, and maybe Rusty try to like expect a little closer or something. Is that Max or me? 
How about you? Okay, just making sure. Texas just laughs because he's a robot. He's quiet otherwise. If I climb Chance's I am shoulder, quiet otherwise. If I climb Chance's shoulder, then they're gonna have we're gonna have two people eliminated from combat because he's gonna run away and he's gonna take me with him. So. <laughs> I would never, I would never run away. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's the green screen. That's why we need Brian to keep an eye on him. Um, great. Is that the plan? Pretty good. Let's go. Okay. <clears throat> great. On it. So you split up. Um, if, as we go along, I wanna um. Lexi to like kind of brush against electronic way to like slowly build up. Okay. Sure. F zero style. Slow build Mark. of <laughs> F zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of like a bracelet, and then we just kind of like occasionally, you know, sure. when you're just like a kid and you're just yeah, yeah, yeah. on the wall. Yeah. A couple things as we go around. Great. Uh, and then now you all have plan, which is um. You choose either attack rolls, saving throws, or ability checks. Then you can activate this benefit once uh, to gain a bonus to your intelligence modifier to those rolls. Start of your next turn. Is there a minimum bonus for those of us who have very <laughs> bad intelligence? <laughs> it's just as equal to your intelligence modifier. Uh, we'll okay. say there's a minimum of plus one. Okay. Yay. Cool. Okay. And it's not also not it's not forced as you can activate. Yeah. I high five Polly. Yeah, I know. Hell <laughs> yeah, bro. Everybody, but it's one. at least oh, yeah. someone. No, oh, plus one. There Wait. we go. Yeah, Wait, this the way. intelligence this is showing. <laughs> see, see what I see? <laughs> well, <me. laughs> uh, uh, we can't even high five each other. <laughs> uh, yeah, they hurt bro. themselves uh, in confusion. Um, okay, Goodness. so yeah. you split up. And move around the sides of the stadium. Uh, so if I'm understanding correctly, in. it's Chance uh, and Ryan and Rusty and Polly, Max and Lexi. Correct? Split this way. Um, and Polly is to go in and make some kind of distraction. I just start being loud, and we can. You know, I'll have. He will have some cover. Um. So like we can get an assessment of the situation. Uh, Max and I. While Polly just gets things going, sure. and the other half will go in and. I don't do know. Pass any, do we pass any food along the way? Yeah, food? there's a snack bar. <gasps> okay, what what's there? Uh, popcorn, tor like tortilla chips, some hot dogs. All right, I uh, Can I, throw gra something I, at I him? grab I grab a popcorn. Okay. I, I I pay for it if I have to. If it's available for free or whatever. No, it's just know. it's just behind the count. I mean, you're stealing it, but nobody's there. Oh, okay, great. So I, I grab some popcorn. Yeah, I don't think you just killed a man. I don't think you're too worried about leaving money behind. Hypocrite. Well, if there was somebody there, I gotta pay for it. I'm a small. I work for a small business. I'm not yeah, gonna but there's steal nobody food. there. All there's right, nobody great. there. Yeah. So. The small business of Madison Square Garden. <laughs> <laughs> Are you eating them away? No, I'm just holding the popcorn. <laughs> This giant Italian man drenched in the blood of his enemies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the show. Um, Wait, anything special you want to do, or are you just in there? Yeah, uh, you leave it to me. All right, try not to get yourself killed. I'll be your backup. Yeah, I usually try to do that. <laughs> try not to get yourself killed. I, uh... um, if only Lexi knew what he just did. <laughs> she has no idea. Briefly. Yeah, so, uh, uh, Polly, what's the play? All right, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna walk in very casually, extremely casually, and then okay. wait, wait for somebody to say anything to me. Just, do, you, do you, like, sit down in one of the seats? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna walk, like, towards the group of people, just, like, just oblivious. Just the popcorn? Yeah. Are you working, walking down the stands or into the stadium? What, what exactly is the layout here? I'm sorry. Well, you're on yeah. like the the first level, and so yeah. you would take stairs down yeah. in the stadium near seats to go towards them. Yeah, right, I do that. Okay. Um, and uh, Chance and Rusty, just... you guys see this happening. Yeah, Lexi will be kind of behind Max, behind Polly to kind of um, like maybe he's just followed by a robot. I'm sure they can tell she's there, but sure. Start. 
Um, as you uh, as you begin walking down, uh, you see Riley. He's like done focusing or whatever, and he says, "Facade's doorman," and like an aura of Brink emanates from around, and you clearly have entered New York too. Um, and uh, Riley's like, "God, it does not get easier with age." Um, and uh, this guy next to him, um, whom you don't know, uh, says, yeah, right, whatever, mate, it's fine. Um, and he just sort of like brushes him off. And then Ryan grasps at Rusty and Chance and is like, oh my God, I know who that is. Uh, Go on. Yeah. And right as they say that, you just see, uh, Riley now no longer concentrating and now that you're all within his brink he can like you get you gather kind of sense you because you're inside facade's door man he looks up at you guys specifically Polly um and is like oh wasn't expecting you guys right now and he's got a suit he's wearing a, a very very nice suit um and he has a dragon mask a very ornate dragon mask on and black hair um, and he says, I wasn't expecting you. Oh, well, I wasn't expecting you to know I was here, actually, so that kind of ruins my plan a little bit. And what was the plan? <laughs> I wasn't really sure yet, but I was just going to walk in and see if anybody noticed me, and then, you know, if anybody, I was just going to offer them some popcorn and be, like, a nice guy about it. He He's wants popcorn. You. No, I think I'm okay. I do! <laughs> uh and riley whips around and says oh yeah you guys too and hello ryan peeks around and is like todd you motherfucker <laughs> and the guy who you don't know who has he's wearing a skin tight black like athletic shirt that like hugs his biceps and he's like jacked um, yeah. Is he extremely and, handsome too? More. No, he's so handsome. How jacked um, is he? Can he's wearing. Uh, he's wearing like you know, like Adidas, like the sort of like Adidas. Um, is it like uh, a midriff shirt? Is his is his midsection exposed? Up, Can we see his back muscles? He's wearing um, the Adidas like uh, athletic joggers, the ones that like hug your ankle and have the like white stripes up the side. Um, and then he has like. You know, sometimes in like Vietnam movies, there will be people who wear like bullet shells on crisscrossing like belt loops <laughs> yes. around there. He has that, but it's small blades. Um, it's all these tiny circular blades that he has. They're almost like throwing stars sure that he you. has like hundreds of them. Um, and uh, he looks up and he goes, Ryan, is that you, mate? It's a pleasure to see you here. And Ryan's like, you were one of the eight that sided against Riley and Gillian. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, mate, no. Come off it, right? I'm just side to side with the winning side, you know? I chose the winning team. When I heard Riley's big connection, you know, get in there. Fight for who I know is going to win. And, uh... Win what exactly? And at that, Polly. Um, Riley turns to the uh, the armored guards and is like why don't you guys get out of here we could use you later in the plan call in the G team if you would though please uh, and one of the guys is like roll out and leans over to a, a little thing and yeah this is uh, strike team leader calling in G team over and they file out the back and uh Riley follows them and is like, Todd, you've got this, right? And Todd, like, starts stretching and then starts stretching his fingers. It's like, yeah, it should be fine, mate. You said they're inexperienced, right? Not that it would matter. And he's like, yeah, you'll be fine. Right. And he pulls out four of the stars and <laughs> holds them in his fingers. And he's like, Ryan, mate, if you're going to be a dick about this, let's just fucking fight. Uh, and everybody roll initiative, please. Uh, 
Uh, Polly. 19. Lexi. Rusty. Three. <laughs> and Chance. 20. Okay. Remember that you have Lexi's plan thing. Oh. Um, is that one, is that just infinite? Use I think it's for one minute. Right, Lexi? Yes. So. so we'll say it's already been like 20 seconds. So we'll say 40 seconds, which is three turns less than two, seven turns. <laughs> There go Polly's dice. <laughs> um, seven turns. So we just get plus one. So um, a bonus equal to your intelligence modifier. Yeah, so plus one if it's a minus. I'm um, done, so. And that is on either saving throws, ability checks, or attack, attack rolls uh, for the next seven turns. Okay. Correct, Lexi? Yes. Um, so you pick one to add a plus one to. Cool. Um, and we are going to start. It counts like if you have a multi-attack, it would count for both. Oh, sweet. We're going into the boss playlist. This guy is really threatening. There is something did about get, him. Did we get a rest? We didn't, did we? Coming out of the video game, you got all your health back. Oh, okay. I missed that part. Uh, and your brink usage back as well. Ooh, fun. Um, and we are starting with Chance. Oh, snap. Um, okay. So we're fighting who? Todd. Todd. The well, night. So I should say, if any of you guys want to follow the people that left, you can. Um, but there is this... You overheard in that conversation, right, between Ryan and Todd. This guy's a member of the eight, who's the elite Brink users trained by Steven. So, like, this guy is on par with Riley. This is like a... He's at that level. Oh. Was coming out of the game essentially a long rest? Yes. Okay. Um, so rather, it put you back to whatever you were at when you went in. Oh, okay. So if you had had a long rest before that, which I think you may have, um, then yes. How far away are they from? Far. They're far. Um, he's like 100 feet from you. Damn. But I'm like you're way up, up in the, right? You're up in the stands, uh, and hmm. he's in the center of the stadium, so maybe even 200 feet, honestly. Could I run forward 30 feet, because that's the maximum, and then you using can, that, or I guess 30 steps? Uh, so you can dash. There, You can take your action to do a dash, which is double your movement speed, but it eats your action. Oh, okay. I'm just going to sprint forward 60 feet. Right. And... Um, uh, yell at Polly make this guy a pancake too and inspire him and that'll be my turn you have an inspiration dice now okay word uh Polly it's your turn or sorry it's Lexi mm -hmm. um direction did the guys running out go so in my mind they were in the center of the stadium. You came in, we'll say the left, and the other team was on the right. They went out the ground level in the back. Okay. Um. And we just have, so we just have Riley and Todd left in the stadium. It's just Todd. We just Todd. Riley also left. Yeah. Okay. Where's Todd right now? He's in the center of the stadium, just about two hundred feet from you. Um. Okay. Uh. I'm gonna stay near. I'm gonna stay near things that have electrical, like metal. Yeah, I mean, there's gonna be, you know, it's a stadium, so near the ground, like where the stadium things take place, there will be lots of ground outlets and stuff for like lights and whatever. Oh no, I mean like um, right now, I assume I'm in the stands still. Yes. Like a bunch of benches. A bunch of benches. Like the ben yeah. What's like seats and things seats, that are yeah seats yeah they're all gonna have like metal acting them right metal sure yeah but there's no electricity yeah. running oh no that's what seats. I mean yeah yeah I've already okay sure, up a bunch. sure 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 there are lights going along 
the That's floor true. between the seats. So all the way down to the stadium, you'll have electric wires for the floor I, lights. We'll say that. Um, that way it's just, it's there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna uh, bring Max and go up to the, she's just gonna go up to like the very front. Um, instead of going out into the stadium, she's gonna wait. Um, that's uh, that's like eighty feet from you. Get to the get to the front. Yeah. Start moving towards. Do you want to dash for that? It means I can't do anything until. Dash just eats your action. It doubles oh, your yeah. movement speed, but eats your action. Dash Great. up as far as I can. That's about it. Oh. Great. Um, what, kinda... I assume Max is just doing the same. Yeah, yeah, he'll come with me, and then um, and just huddle. Great. Uh, Polly. How close did I get to this guy? Before I was. I'd say in the, in the span of that conversation, you maybe walked like forty feet. So you're like forty feet from the railing, which is then like a hundred feet or so to the guy. Okay. I uh, I'll go. I'll take a dash. Also hurdle the railing. Hop onto the stadium floor. Get. 60 feet from him. Okay. Yeah, you have more speed than everybody else. Yeah. Um, great. Is that your turn? Uh, I'm also going to call out, like, hey, what beef do you have with us? We haven't even met each other. Uh, he says... Mate, I've just been told you're against the plan, so, you know, got to take care of you. Sorry what about kind it. of plan? Nothing, nothing personal. I don't think I'm at privy to say. You can't just kill us for a plan we don't even know exists. Yeah. Sure I can. Watch me. No, don't kill us. Well, how can we against, be against the plan if we don't even know what it is? You gotta use your brain sometimes, man. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely good logic. Look at the DM. Genuinely, Look at the DM and laugh. Look at him and laugh. Logic. He's like, you know that's not how this works. Oh, there it is. Good save. Well done. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, all right. After Polly is Ryan. Um, what cool shit can Ryan try to do to get there fast? Uh, ooh, ooh, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. What is it? Chance go. Okay. Can he turn the steps into a slide and then use the extra concrete to make like a ramp and then like? Oh, that's oh. fun. That's fun. Okay. They take off their shoes and socks and then uh, slide down the steps, um, which genuinely I think are concrete, like fully. Um, mm -hmm. And they're like sliding down and then pop off and like do a flip. Rusty's on the shoulder, by the way. <laughs> Rats have claws. He's wearing clothes. It's fine. <laughs> The last, <laughs> the second the last time in two hours, hour, experiencing massive G forces. Nightmare, <laughs> nightmare for Rusty. Um, you should have stayed on my shoulder. It's too late for me now. Uh, and they land Remember and me. slip their just their socks on and toss the. They've tossed the shoes, um, oh, and shit, they take off shoes. their gloves and just put them in their pockets, uh, and uh, they then dash. Uh, so that was like five feet. So we'll say the slide was free action. Lands is a hundred feet. Takes a dash sixty, so they're forty feet off. Yeah, what's up, Lexi? What was the last thing that occurred in stadium up? For uh, we'll say it was a basketball game. Accurate. Some some, some Brooklyn Nets game of some kind. Um, and, uh, Ryan is just getting ready. Um, and after Ryan is Todd, uh, Todd is going to turn his bracelet, his black bracelet, uh, and say, <gasps> I believe it's called, yes, El Elastic Collisions. Uh, elastic collision is what he says. Elastic. Elastic? And he takes the, uh, the little uh, throwing, like the little ninja stars, sh the shuriken, and he throws one at the ground, like 
you know, sort of giving it like a little bit of angular momentum so that it bounces like a frisbee. You know how you can like bounce a frisbee off the ground if you throw mm -hmm. it just so? The ninja star bounces off the ground and as it bounces off the ground, it doubles in speed um, and goes flying at Ryan and we'll roll to hit. That hits. Uh, and it is... Where are my dice? There it is. Ooh. They take 20 damage. Ooh wee. Um, and then they turn around and throw one up against the basketball hoop, and it pings off the uh, the pole just below the backboard and goes f uh, flying towards Polly. Wow, this guy's Polly, level five. He's got two attacks. Does a twelve hit you? No. Uh, so it it barely misses you. It's like, and it it also doubled in speed as it hit the basketball uh, thing, and it digs into the concrete. Um, and then Todd just basically readies more ninja stars, uh, and it is Rusty's turn. My turn. Well, uh, seeing my friend Ryan get hit was no bueno, so I'm going to go ahead and use my medicinal knowledge and uh, do another quick fix. Sure. Uh, let's use, I'll use four again. 16 divided by two is eight plus one is nine. So Ryan regains nine health. Nice. 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 Um, and considering Ryan seems to have more movement opportunity than I do, I'm going to kind of just, I'll, I'll use helpful as like a, a bonus Act, or yeah, I guess a bonus action for that. Okay. For anything that Ryan wants to do next. Okay. Um, after Rusty, we go back up to the top to Chance. So I got 60 feet closer, so I'm still 140 100, off. 140 off, yeah. Actually, let's retcon say 120, because that's, I think, how I did it for Polly. So okay. you're 120 feet off. <laughs> okay. This is 180 total. You've done yeah. 60. Um, a large thing in your pocket you can get on, and then there's a lead pierce. Do I? Let's follow. see. <laughs> I mean, you're almost um, to the bottom. You're 20 feet from the end of the stairs. Oh. So, no. <laughs> um, I guess, could I, could I bonus action that 20 feet by hopping on a welder's mask? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Why not? All right. I whip it. out the welder's mask and hop on it and uh, can you, breath of the uh, wild down the stairs. Can you roll athletics for me for that check, please? Uh, fine. <laughs> I have to roll athletics, but Ryan gets a free action. Sure. Well, well your it's strength a good is thing. like minus five. Good thing I'm an athlete because... <laughs> Wait, does the negative modifier actually be negative for it? Yes. Oh. Ten. Uh, yeah, it's fine. You're like balancing yeah. on the welder's <laughs> mask. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And then you hit the end and tumble over the railing and land, surprising everyone, including hey. yourself. Uh, yeah. And then now you are just, you're 100 feet away and you have your okay. full movement left. I would like to dash. Great. Uh, you are now only 40 feet away. And then I will, ins how many inspirations do I even get? It's a lot. It, it is. I just don't remember how many. Uh, number of time equal to your charisma modifier. That would be, I believe, three. I've used one. I'll use another one to... This song is so good. ...inspire Ryan and say, Please don't let me die! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ryan's like, I got you, chief. Oh, pa Patrick, those arms are looking good, bro. Thanks, man. I've been working on them. The gym's been the gym's been treating you well, my friend. You're looking Thank good. Thank you. Um, I was trying to make a joke about working on them, like. Uh, that did not read. You no, know, it did didn't, read, because no. you kind of just kept complimenting me, and I didn't know to how nice. to. Yeah. 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 I appreciate okay. that. 
yeah, but no it problem. made me look like a dick. So <laughs> <laughs> what else is new? Uh, um, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Chance, if that's your turn, then we go to Lexi. This song's also a slapper. Uh, let's just <clears throat> run again to the very front. I'm going to kind of dip behind the front chairs now while I okay. formulate my next move. Great. Is Max doing the same? Um, um, I'm going to send Max for it. Okay. Uh, so you were... Is he dashing? Yeah, Max can dash. What's his movement speed? Uh, he has um 30 feet. Okay, so he's within 60 feet now. Okay. Uh, great. After Lexi is Polly. Okay, I'm uh I am 60 feet from him. That's a yell at Chance. Quick. Sure. What do you want to say? Like Chance, the water bottles. What? Use the water bottles! <laughs> I don't... I, I, I don't pull think out he ever, the one he, crumpled, he, empty he water bottle I have. No, he never took the ones that you left for him and wanted him to steal. He never got them. No. Well, because he never came back to. He said he yeah, was going to. Yeah, never went back. So he doesn't yeah. have yeah. them. Never mind. Oh, I, wow, that's that why will, I completely will, was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> that I, will I, evidently I, become relevant at some combat in the future, assuming everybody lives. Yeah, I guess fuck? so. Um, Sorry. I... Oh, I uh okay um, i do have the crumple i pull out a confused pull out a crumpled water bottle water. that <laughs> what's his fuck used in the first episode justin. Justin. With, the justin. Fucking, with, with what's his name from the first part of the justin justin, justin. the scary justin. horrible awful god of nature that justin. terrifies me to my core he's still getting out of his coma <laughs> <laughs> This is such a soap opera <laughs> bullshit. He's in a coma still, damn it! But he's to be my husband. <laughs> Your um, husband? Oh! Quel dommage. Da, da. Um, Polly, what are you doing? We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> uh, I'm going to walk up to uh, around 30 feet from the guy with okay. normal movement, no dashing. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to use my action to take the dodge action. Which What's allows me. It, it's just like a baseline thing that everybody has access to at all times, I think. It just okay. it makes me. It, it means that attacks against me have disadvantage if I want to just take my turn to be dodging. Is that real? Yeah. You can I've disengage, D &D for dash, like dodge, help. Eight years. Dip, dive, and dodge. Yeah. yeah. If you can see the attacker, you make dexterity saving throws with advantage also. What? Yeah, it's good if you don't have anything you can do. Otherwise. Two campaigns and you've never done this. I do, I've always revealing? had something to do. I was very far away, okay? At first campaign, he was a goddamn destructive holy tank of kick-ass. So he was always doing shit. We had four tanks in campaign one. It's true. <laughs> it was himbo the campaign. It was great. Bunch of barbarous assholes roaming through a Well, it was land. three tanks and a guy who had the most DPS of all time. <laughs> yeah, Gouger was right. like, oh, here's a hundred damage. <laughs> aptly, <laughs> my aptly, my short aptly named Gouger. Dude, <laughs> I'm telling you, rogues are overpowered. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to hide behind literally anything, gain advantage <laughs> on everything, and do seven hit dice worth of damage. <laughs> and then I attack again. Ooh, okay. Oh, wait, oh, is this a blade me? of grass? No, you what? don't. <laughs> oh. The best one was like, oh, no, I don't take damage this time. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been more than um, once. Uh, Jesus. Um, I love rogues. <laughs> okay, after Polly is Ryan. Uh, that's me. I have to do that. Um, okay, Ryan gets in close and gathers up some concrete and just tosses it, uh, and it becomes solid. I will be back in one second. I'm being helpful, sure. so this is with advantage. Really? Is sure it just is. the next attack, or is it both attacks? Um, 
Let's see. First one's a hit. Gains advantage on the next ability check it makes or attack roll. The next attack roll. With so probably advantage. just the first one. Yeah. Well, they both hit. Um, and do. What about your plan? Is that plus one? He, uh, they're going to choose to take it on attack rolls. Um, they both hit anyway. Um, 26 damage. Uh, Ryan just... Just these massive concrete blobs that then shape because of the air as they morph into needles. Like, they're massive. Like, have you seen, uh, if you've seen Full Metal Alchemist, it's basically the, like, things that uh, Major Armstrong conjures when he, like, punches concrete out of the air and it turns into, like, drills. Um, that Little is essentially... statues of himself flexing. <laughs> it's... Oh, so let's go. Um, that's 26 we damage. We passed down the Armstrong family for generations! <laughs> uh, these... <laughs> hit Todd hard. Uh, and then Ryan just sort of posts up. Um, and it is Todd's turn, speaking of. And Todd will... Uh, is senses something imposing about Polly. also chance saying you should pancake that guy um <laughs> so todd throws todd looks up into the rafters and throws a shuriken downwards and it bounces off the uh, the basketball court then up to a rafter and then comes down so it bounces twice Polly does a 20 hit you you're muted. Sorry, did you roll that with disadvantage? No. Does dodge. Does a 20 hit you? <laughs> yes. Twenty-four. Owie. Um it he throws it fast, it doubles in speed when it hits the ground, and then it doubles in speed again when it hits the rafter. By the time it comes down to you, it's moving on godly fast. It slices down your side um, and goes through the hardwood floor of the basketball court. Uh, and then uh, he turns towards Chance and throws one in such a way that it bounces off the ground and then off the wall of the stands and then at chance chance I ducked. Is a... <laughs> <laughs> rolled a nat 20. Oh, <laughs> oh no. no oh no I'm gonna have to make new characters Uh -oh. It's uh, 43. I don't think chance exists anymore. How much? What's your max health? 27. I'm just out. Oh, okay. You're alive. <laughs> You're unconscious. Barely alive. So how does that work exactly? So you Do go I down... keep the negative no, number? No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. It has to be one attack that does your net negative health. Okay. So you go down to zero. Okay, um, cool and uh, you will start rolling death saves on the next turn. Remember me. Um, I'm just being super dramatic, even though I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're fully unconscious. Oh, I can't be dramatic. Damn. No, you're fully right. unconscious. The thing bounces off the ground. It's like, <clears throat> and when it catches you in the side, it actually lifts you off the ground. This thing that weighs less than a pound and slams you into the ground. Um, night, night. Night. Have a nice sleep. Uh, that was two attacks. Uh, it is now Rusty's turn. Um, how far did I... Full party wipe? How far did Ryan run? You can reach Chance, I think. Okay, I'm going to dash back over there then. Okay. Um, and what? It, how does it work? Trying to revive teammates. Uh, you can if you can heal him. You can just give him HP, and it will stabilize him. Okay. 
Um, net amount of HP is determined by whatever I roll for my heal. Uh, you can do if you so it, since you're an actual healer, um, you can use your healing ability or whatever it's called and just heal him for that normal amount. Okay. Oh, there's no special um, thing. It's just the healing dice that you used twice today. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And I got them all back when I came out of the video game. How many did you use on Ryan? Four. Oh. And I have 12 total. Um, okay. I'm going to then... Yeah, I'm going to do another quick fix then. I'll okay. use... I'll use three this time just to get right. him back on his feet. I roll eight, four, so five. You have five health. Hell yeah. You are stabilized at five HP. <clears throat> Still unconscious, I assume? Uh, that worked. No, this is in normal 5e, by you just, different DMs. In normal 5e rules are just you're awake and yeah. you're fine. Correct. Like, you can... <gasps> I'm like, I'm like slapping his face. Like, stay with us, stay with us, stay with us. Here, smell this stolen T-shirt. <laughs> smell, smell this T-shirt that this doesn't cellophane. belong to you. <laughs> it's mine now. Okay. Um, excellent. Is that your turn, Rusty? It's my turn. Okay, we go back up top to Chance. Oh God, I guess I stand up and wipe the blood off of my side as I as best I can. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I'm still 40 feet, right? Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. 40 feet. Hmm. I, uh, I think I'm going to take this opportunity to... Where's Ryan? Uh, a little further up than you. Okay. Um, I'm going to within... yell, I told you not to let me die. <laughs> 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 and they're like, I'm trying. Okay. Oh, oh. As I'm like, trying to keep blood from falling out of me, I go, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I don't really feel like I should get super close. I'm going to walk maybe like 10 feet up while staying okay. behind Ryan. So okay. I'm 30 feet away. And, uh, oh, God, I don't even know. For what it's worth... Todd has been bludgeoned. He doesn't have like an open wound, but he is bleeding out of his face and his shoulder. Can I can I put one of my records in his mouth? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll try that. We'll, we'll I've, I've got blood you'll all over me. You'll have to get me. out from you'll have to get out from behind Ryan to do that. You want to know how I got these scars? Can I <laughs> <laughs> Can I do it before I move? Danny, I've already all due respect, move. please never do, do a Heath Ledger Joker ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also sick, so I'm not very good okay. right now at impressions. <laughs> um, Chance, what are you doing? I, I'm just going to be peeking out yeah. from over the shoulder. Sure. And here we go. Roll Gotta get dice, a six baby. and a one. That's a three. A two. A five. Oh, man, we're hitting everything. A two. Two chances. Three. I thought it was seven times. Oh, is it seven? Yeah, because it's sevens. Oh, I thought so it was... What, what do you have to yeah. get? So you it's can a roll D6. Two, so you can roll two more times now. Yeah. That's a six. Okay, so we need, need a, one. a one. You have to get a six and a one. Three. Yeah. I can roll a D6 seven times. I have to get a six and a one to make seven within those seven times. Because my gloves have a six and a one. It's on like them. Yahtzee for a psychopath. Yes. True. Yes. I I have failed. Uh, that is okay. Bummer. Um, <laughs> I guess that was my action. So yeah. I'll use my my last inspire. Uh, on on Rusty. <laughs> okay. What do you say? <laughs> Ryan can't do shit. You don't let me die, please. <laughs> I'm just a rat, but I'll do my best. You healed me. I got you. I pat um, his head. Thank you. After chance is Lexi. Okay. What a what a mess. <laughs> so far, I'm... Lexi has been hiding. We'll see what's the game plan here. Just got down to the front. <laughs> 
I'm just yanking your chain. <laughs> it's gonna take me down in less than one hit. Um, I, I still have how much space to cover between the edge of the hundred seat? feet. Yeah. Uh. Um. I I have to like dash twice. And I still wouldn't be able to do. I'm still just standing in the center. Yeah. Uh, I, God, I really have no idea. Um, have your robot throw you down? <laughs> down <the laughs> sixty feet ahead of me already. Can oh your, shit! Uh, I mean, there's there's no shame in just doing dodge or whatever. But also, can your brink not do long range stuff? It hasn't really developed that far. If I lose control of it, sure. Hmm. We haven't done things like that's why I need like a like some something conductive to go through. Yeah, maybe we'll devise some way for it to be for you to because like you being able to support Max is how like mechromancers are supposed to work. Um, so we'll we'll connect on this. We have to call some time. Electricity can travel anyway. through the air. Yeah, we should. That's true. You could just do a little like lightning bolt to Max, not like force power, like right. but just like literal, like a literal like. Why do you think I want fucking water accessible? Is there no jug of water on the side of the fucking stadium or anything? Just spit. <laughs> what? Just spit. Just spit. Um, yeah. I mean, what, what do you do? You want to dash? I can just run up to Max and then I'll just have to wait. Okay, so you dash to Max and then what's Max gonna do? Uh, he's gonna, he's waiting for me because I, if he runs, then he can't catch right. up to him. I'm okay. gonna can you take your turn so jump on him. like jump on him and then have him dash? Yes, that is true. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have him dash up to, you know, 10 feet away. Okay. I'm gonna be right on him immediately. You are now 10 feet away. You're in the fray. Um, after Lexi and Max is Pauly. This song is so good, dude. All okay, right. It's great. Uh, it's so Kufid. <laughs> Kufid. Good lord. What's the how, hell, how the are these, called Kufid? <laughs> how is he gaining access to these shurikens? They're all strapped to him. Okay. On like. Are they made out of metal? Yes. They're on like, like things that are attached to him. They're like latched into belts that are going around his waist and his back. Do I feel like these belts could potentially be removable? Maybe. Okay. Like it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take one look at them and be like, nah, it's impossible. No. I mean, he has to get them on somehow. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You don't know how, but there's some mechanism. You're sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna rush him. Uh, while I'm running over there, I'm going to use uh, a bonus action called Second Wind to gain some health back. Uh, this will give me 1d10 plus my level HP. I rolled 8, so I gain 12 health back. Nice. Uh, and uh, as I'm running up there, uh, for my action, I'm going to attempt to just yank the belt from wherever it's attached to his pants or wherever it's attached to anything and just pull it's, as hard it's as basically I can. like he's wearing the thing that like gunnery sergeants would wear where like it is surrounding his back like a sash and he has oh, two it's, it's a solid loop it's two solid loops okay and is it just draped over his shoulder then basically yes but okay. one of them is interlaced into the other one all right, I'm, I'm just gonna try to get it off him as any way I can. Any way I see is possible, I'm gonna try to just yank it off. Okay, roll strength, please. Um, I'm also going to use my inspiration die. You're rolling Attaboy. against, you're rolling against a 10. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna use my inspiration die on this. <laughs> and the, uh, did you 12. use the, um, Plan die? I don't know. That doesn't. Oh, help. Uh, I was I was planning on using that on on attack rolls, so I'll be consistent and not use it oh. on that. Uh, you you are able to yank the first loop of two off of him. Okay, I'm I am holding on to that. You're right next to him. I mean, I got nowhere else I can go, so I'm, I'm <laughs> okay. just 
I'm just throw standing it. here with it, just guarding <laughs> it with my life. Okay. Um. All right. Is that your turn? All I got. Okay. Uh, after Polly is Ryan. Uh, Ryan is gonna get right up close, and he, they've encased their fist in concrete, and then are just gonna um. Uh, like they put a glove on and then encase that fist in concrete and then it's just gonna fucking haymaker that is a hit fourteen oh yeah that's some damage um and then they are going to use uh a bonus action um, to administer some healing to Polly. Don't forget your inspiration dice. I just used it. No, Ryan. Oh, oh, uh, oh, Ryan does have one. So what is inspiration? Do I get to roll twice or? You just no. gain, add a d6 um, if you want. Creature can roll a die and add number rolled to ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Okay. Um, and then, uh, Polly, you get seven health back. Nice. Uh, and it is, after Ryan is Todd, um, Todd is going to try to bounce one off the ground right in front of Polly to hit Polly. Does a 17 hit you? Just barely not. To clarify, your armor class is 18? 18. Yeah. Great. Because tie goes to the roller. Yep. Uh, in the ADF world. Uh, and then they're going to use the second one to just hit Polly again. 18 this time. Only 12 damage this time. Okay. Um, and uh, they are going to uh, disengage backwards as a bonus action and uh, move their full movement speed. Uh, his full movement speed is 60 feet. What? Uh, and he is going to run back and he does a backflip into the stands behind him. Now, wait a minute. Doesn't Polly it. get an attack of opportunity? <laughs> no, uh, he has Shifty, uh, which is an ability that allows him to disengage as a bonus action. Fuck. Fuck. Um, We're spending this whole fight just chasing after this dude. And uh, after that is Rusty. It is, and I'm on Tom's Ryan's shoulder. beaten up, by the way. I'm on Ryan's shoulder now, 60 feet away. No, you went to go help Chance. Right. So, uh, so you are now. I was right behind Ryan. No, you well, Ryan moved approached. up. He came from yeah. different moved sides. Up to be right so behind which Ryan. way did he go? Ryan was with Chance. Oh, no, um, which way did Todd go? If we came in from opposite sides. He went sides. back. He went backwards. What? To the like. You were coming in pincer this way. He perpendicular. He went perpendicularly that so way. He's at an angle to them now. Yeah. Uh, so you went to Chance, who was like 40 feet away. You're like 70 or 80 feet away, Rusty. Okay. Um. Hmm. I have very limited abilities to use. I'm going to run up to join i guess the rest of the team that's kind of clustered where he used to be okay um climb up on Polly's shoulder and provide help for the next attack great uh after rusty is back to chance uh i guess i run up how far away is the group from me it's very confusing yeah fair um the bottom line is you're you're 60 feet basically from the enemy. Okay. Sure. Um I guess I'll run up 30 feet and chuck a knife from my pocket at him. Okay. Can uh, I do that? Roll, I don't know what that would do damage roll wise. Roll a d20 and add dexterity. Okay. Uh 15. 
That hits. Oh, okay. I was going to say 16 with planning. Uh, this is also good. the first attack not from Ryan to hit the boss. <laughs> and this is the fourth turn. <laughs> um, so how do we do damage for me <laughs> chucking a knife? <laughs> Your guys' fault for not having any ranged attacks. I threw a knife. I Check my DMs. Next time. Next time. I'm working. Uh, <laughs> roll 1d6 and add dexterity. Okay. Listen. Uh, six. Six total? Total, yeah. Great. You get a little taste of his own medicine, uh, and it stabs into his, uh, into his thigh. Yay. 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 Uh, Lexi, it's your turn. All right, Max is dashing after him. And then he should be able to do that, and then I can jump off. <clears throat> yeah, and you can close the gap if you want. I do. I also have a stun gun I've never used, which was what I was given way back in the... Oh, yeah. Weapons, dude. So I'm going to get that out. I'm going to um, release my brink at the same time that I stab him on the spot. Like, so both do going you have a multi-attack? Uh, oh, I can't just do... Like, no, through that's the stun two gun? actions. That's two actions. The stun you're gun. saying you're using the stun gun or you're using your brink? You can do one of these things. Can't use this. Can't, well, I want to use the pat, like the electricity in the stun gun. Goes through. I thought you had to charge for that. I mean, charge my you brink? You said you have to charge off electronics. I've gone through Max before. Why wouldn't I be able to go through a stun gun? What do you mean go through? I'm, I'm outputting confused. I'm outputting what I've charged up from running through oh, the Oh, oh, you're just using it as a conductor. Yes, correct. So you don't have to touch him. I mean, I'm up to I I can get to him and touch him with it. Right. So that's why I'm saying I don't understand why this is being used. If you're implying that the taser adds extra power, I don't think so. What? Because you have to <laughs> charge. <laughs> Um, so Good I point. think it's, I, I'm, I'm going to make the executive decision that it's just the charged energy. Or you can use the taser. We are not having another hail of thorns moment. We are not having another hail of thorns moment here. I disagree with you, but I, but it would take too long. So Tough whatever. Shit, bro. Tough shit, bro. Just gonna... Hold on to his fucking. You were literally his... about to electrocute a man. Yeah, I'll just go through the fucking. Uh, Great. How much? Hurricanes, uh, whatever. What have I been? How have I been doing this before? Um, I've been doing it based on like amount. Said roll d two two d ten plus intelligence for regular charge, but I guess I have to. I'm touching him. I don't think it's a dodge, right? Do I try? Oh, 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 oh. like to roll to hit. Yeah. Uh, no, I think you probably just get him. Um, so yeah, roll 2d10 plus intelligence. Uh, 10. Okay. Uh, we'll also say it bursts him backwards. Um, so you, you plant hands and the electricity and it, and it, he flies backwards. Um, and, uh, we'll say he goes back six feet and takes one extra damage from the landing um just from falling onto the stairs uh is that your turn and then i'm just gonna get, get back behind max okay great because he's like uh, he's within 10. oh for sure absolutely um paulie it is your turn okay uh can i see him still he's 66 feet away from me uh, yes, you can, anything? you can, he's on the stairs, but he went up. Yeah, you can see him. All right. Uh, I'm going to close the gap a little bit, um, start running. And then when I'm within 60 feet of him, uh, I'm going to twist my bracelet and okay. I'm, I'm carrying the, the shurikens with me. Yes. Um, and, uh, I'm going to, I think I see where this is going. Gravity schmavity. And I'm going to get him. Uh, to come towards me at two uh, two times gravity, I'm gonna give him like an upwards arc, and I'm gonna do the same thing to myself. So we're just we're going like this toward each other in the air. How cute! Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Uh, he has to roll a, what, a wisdom save? Yeah. Gotta close this gap somehow. He keeps running away. 10. Uh, had to beat 12. Okay, he fails. Great. Gravity Schmav, he's working out today. Um, uh, okay. You're... You're going like this. Now hold on, we gotta are bust we... out the graph paper. Are we on a, <laughs> are we on a collision got course? The can, we, can we just say that we're on a collision course? Yeah, I assume that's what you wanted. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Um, I'm just, uh, as as we're coming towards each other in here, I'm just gonna try to whack him with this belt full of sharp shit. <laughs> I knew this would happen in this campaign, but it really is like, I just have to come up with damage rolls all the time. <laughs> Um, oh, I'll just use, here's what I'll do. Uh, roll a d20 and add strength for me, Polly. Okay. Ooh, uh, 19. That's a hit. Um, and, uh, roll 2d6 plus strength. Right? B. Um. That's the same as if you rolled if you slashed with two of these things, which I think feels fair. Okay. The plan bonus was to the attack roll, not the damage, right? Correct. Okay, so... Four. Four. Uh, eight, and then plus strength is 11 damage. Very nice. Uh, you are coming at each other just a few feet above the ground, I assume. This is not the right vibe. Um, you are coming at each other just a few feet above the ground, and you just... Wow. Um, were you also going 2x gravity? Sure was. What happens when you hit him? Does he decelerate or is he still accelerating? Well, as soon as we left 30 feet from our initial positions, we only have the velocity that we ended up with. Oh, okay. Well, if you were 66 feet away, you kind of met right after that point. Um, yeah. Like right. one foot each after yeah, that so point. Yeah, we, so we're basically going our max speed, and then we just collide into each other, I guess? Yeah, you're both going to take damage from that. Um, we'll oh, do I'm it on his if... shoulder, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are! Oh, my God. <laughs> you just have the best luck. Your choices have been amazing. <laughs> I just I wait for you to get on my shoulder and then I just take off like Superman. <laughs> Rusty, we're gonna handle you in a second. Okay. He <laughs> <laughs> just says gravity schmavity Rusty's like motherfucker, oh. not again. Oh, God, no. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> um you said two times gravity? What was the help supposed to do? Was I supposed to get advantage on my attack? Yeah. Uh, can I see it? Can I see yeah, it? Yeah, you can check. Double you can damage? Check. Yeah, you can check. Not double damage. Okay. 20, and you move 30 feet. How much is 30 feet in meters? Can someone look it up for me real quick? It's like um, a little less than that'd be like 10 nine yards. meters. So it'd be it's 10. Like nine meters. Ish. No, yeah. I want it exactly. 9.562. Now we're round by nine. That's fine. I made that number up. Ooh, that's actually a nice square root. <laughs> I, for one, am glad that it ended up being a nice square root. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you each are moving 19 meters per second towards each other. Mm. So you collide at 19 meters per second, which is the same as... 40 miles an hour again. <laughs> uh, so we'll just do it the same way as we did before. So we'll do 3d6. As if you had fallen 30 feet. Yeah. So, Pauly, you take 5, 10, 16 damage from the collision. That's big roll Yikes. for 3d6. Yeah, I rolled 5, 5, 6. Uh, right. We'll say, in fairness, we'll say he takes the same. Which... Okay. Kills him, to be clear. Oh, oh. hey! Yeah! Uh, Kamikaze <laughs> meatball pink, pink strikes pink. again. You just smack, like, you're moving <laughs> relative to each other 80 miles an hour. This is a generously low roll for how much damage you should be taking. 
<laughs> In fact, I'm going to roll the other 3d6. Go ahead, do it. <laughs> Uh, if he had a long well. rest, two, he'll bounce back up. Two, you take another nine on top. He's right. fine. I'm still up. Um, Listen, and, all uh, I got is a now, 1d6 brass knuckles. All I have is my body. And I, I'm a cannonball. <laughs> now we get to do Rusty. Something tells me that like the impact of two people hitting each other like this, I would just go like flying off Correct. of his shoulder. So you <laughs> are you hanging on? Let's do that first. Roll a strength save for me, please, Rusty. Sure. This is to determine you whether or not you held on. It. It you may, want maybe, to you fail it. Even, maybe you don't even come with me. DC of um, I'll say fifteen. Maybe run. Maybe run an intelligence you, save for whether or not you yet? decide to hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna yeah, go. Roll, fuck this. <laughs> roll intelligence first. No, I rolled a two, so it's okay. You failed. So you yeah. fell off the second Polly started accelerating. Yeah. You immediately okay. dropped. That's um, nice. Perhaps the one time you've wanted to fail a roll. Uh, True that. You dropped off of Polly and you take no damage. I mean, you just fall a couple feet. Um, <laughs> it may have killed you, genuinely. If the two of them <laughs> collided, you would have been going 40 miles an hour before the collision. Right. Um, because you'd be holding on at 40 hit and then i guess you just continue at 40 so you would have hit the wall at 40 miles an hour which <laughs> i don't know if you've ever pitched a rat 40 miles an hour into a concrete <laughs> wall but they die <laughs> um, that's just what happens to them they die you know i have and you'd be surprised oh okay oh. um i learned something about patrick today <laughs> what uh you killed him this dude's dead nice work um he hits the ground lifeless. Uh, and as this happens, and Richard, if you could do me a favor here and fade out the music. I, now that the battle is over, stumble my way up to Polly, wrench the belt of knives from him and shove it in my pocket angrily. Yeah, fair, fair. Um, I'm going to just give you the stats for the ninja stars now if you ever want to throw one. Oh, sure. Um, it's uh, to hit is plus dexterity. Um, and it is 1d6 plus uh, dexterity damage. Yes. What does it get? Yes. There's probably 80 of them on there. I am a fan of this. Um, what, was, what was it again? Sorry. Um, uh, plus dex. Hit, what was the plus damage? Dex, uh, damage is 1d6 plus dex. Got it. Uh, okay, so after you destroy Todd, um, the uh, the doors open and Riley comes back in and is wearing the dragon mask and uh, and he says, "You killed Todd. That wasn't that wasn't a part of the plan. I mean, you know, it doesn't really matter, but it wasn't part of the plan. Uh, that's really unfortunate, guys. That sucks. There's no plan. We don't know your stupid plan." And he removes the mask and he goes, well, we have a special guest, actually. And uh, they're coming in from the opposite side of the stadium, by the way. They, so you're like yelling. Um, and uh, a man walks in behind Riley or yeah, behind Riley. And it's this six foot six bald dude. And he's got these black glasses, like thin, like like Morbius style glasses. Morbin uh, out. And there are scars, not that Morbius, Morbius, god damn it. There are scars all over his face. And uh, should go. <laughs> Ryan immediately hops to and runs up to all of you and is like, get back, get back, get back, get back. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, uh, this guy basically starts approaching and he's on the other side of the stadium and he lifts up a black bracelet and also walking in behind him, are, I guess you now have a name for this, the G team, uh, as was said into the walkie-talkie, are the four people you had met at the dock. Um, and Ryan goes, that's Gillian. And Gillian, who is supposed to be dead, turns I was going to say, bracelet. do we know this name? Sorry. Yes, he is the, like, the compatriot of Riley, um, who is supposed to be deceased, supposedly ah. killed by Stephen. Uh, in the battle when uh, Riley and Gillian turned against the other members of the eight. Mm. Uh, 
and Gillian turns the bracelet and says, quiet thief. And as he says this, a burst of brink energy, unlike anything you've ever felt before, emanates throughout the room and like pricks at your very skin. And he says, after quiet thief, he says, capital punishment. And brink energy starts amassing in his hands and he just like evaporates from the stairs and is suddenly right at Ryan, grabs Ryan's shoulder and just swings at the head and Ryan's head explodes, bursts, blood. The body falls to the ground, lifeless blood pouring out of where Ryan's head just was. I rush to him immediately. Uh, and Gillian just shakes his hands. He's like, oh, it feels good to stretch those muscles after all this time. Oh, Ryan was always annoying. And I mean, you know, shock and horror. I mean, th 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 there are no other words to describe this. This man just literally leapt 150 feet and then just domed your friend. And as that happens, oh yeah, the standing hair starts end. standing up on end. Yeah, like, fair. Ooh. Um, a hole bursts in the ceiling of the stadium. And uh, Richard, I'm going to fade the music back in. A hole bursts in the ceiling, and three figures drop from the ceiling straight to the ground. Just doo -doo -doo. and Jameson is there. And it's Jameson and Will and a woman you've never met. And uh, Gillian and Jameson lock eyes and you see Jameson stare just like he turns pale white. And he immediately looks over and sees Ryan's body, turns the bracelet and says, Hell's agent and a scythe appears in Jameson's hands. <laughs> Spins it and puts it behind his back. And then uh, he looks over at um, the two people he's with, Will, who is the uh, the CEO of the investment firm, the young guy that you had met, and this woman you've never met, who's like maybe 30. Um, and he says to the two of them, get everybody the fuck out of here. They're the future of this. I'll take care of him. And uh, Will's like, yeah, sorry, we're late, loves. And starts running towards you guys. And this woman also walks out and is like, Salut, salut, hi. And she is wearing, she has a, a like a, a typewriter that is connected via a strap around her back and around her waist. So she's running with a typewriter in front of her. Um, and uh, the two of them like vault the wall and are running up to you. And Gillian backs up. Uh, he sees the three of them and immediately backs up. Uh, and quickly, this will incur an attack of opportunity for if anybody who wants it will say Lexi uh, and Rusty at the very least. Sure. Or Gillian? Yes. I don't know if I have any electrical charge yet. The left. Okay. It can get one for Max if you want. Um, No, she's horrified at Ryan. Honestly, she wouldn't. She wouldn't be able to move. And Rusty? Uh, yeah, I'll do it as a kind of you just decimated my friend type right. retaliatory measure. 14? Um, no, that does not hit. All right. You swing and miss, and he backs up quickly into the center of the basketball court. Uh, and um, Gillian is like, Riley, you told me they wouldn't be here. Riley's like, I, I didn't know they were coming. Gillian's like, I'm not, I can't fight them yet. Riley's like, I didn't know. And so Gillian's like, all right, G-Team, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's let Riley's guys take care of this. And they start to back up towards the entrance and Jameson's like, uh-uh, no fucking chance. And he turns his bracelet again and says, death's doorman. And his scythe doubles in length and turns bright red. And Rusty, you've never seen this before. And there is a timer, a digital timer on the side of the scythe that starts slowly counting down. And Gillian's like, fucking run. And all of them start bolting out of the stadium. And these armed guards start filing in just like 20, 30 by the masses. And 
Jameson starts swinging the scythe at them, and as the blade pricks them, they instantly die. Um, and when they die, you see five seconds get added to the timer, and then it starts counting down again. And he's That's just fun. blowing through these guys, uh, and the timer's going up, back down, up, back down, up, back down, and it's around, like, ten-ish minutes uh, is on the timer. And... Uh, He's just blowing through these guys, and Will and this woman gets you, and they're like, we we gotta fucking go. We, we have to go right now. Um, I think, I think, um, realistically, if anybody is near, like, touching Lexi, they're gonna get, not, like, electrocuted, but probably static shock. Static. <laughs> sure. He's like, I, I don't know. Oh, God. there's one more thing. There's one more thing. Uh, Gillian, you all lock eyes with the G team, Gillian's team, uh, in the back. And Gillian looks at all of you, quickly turns the bracelet, and says, you can't really make out what he says. But this, like, ethereal bird appears in front of him, and it flies over to you guys and lands on Polly's head, and then flies back to Jameson. Oh no. And it disappears and he's like And then they run out. Wow. That sounds familiar. That sounds very familiar. And that is where we will end campaign 3 episode 5 of Speedrunners. Right. Wow. Boom baby. So much Big fan drama. Of how that was. Y'all are not ready for Gillian, dude. This is We're... maybe the coolest <laughs> villain I've ever designed we need, by leaps we need, and like, bounds. We need training. We need, we need Skywalker something more training. powerful, yeah. <laughs> I need more ninja stars. Holy. This is like, I, I've been, ex like, the palm was a cool villain. I liked the palm. Um, in campaign one, I thought he was interesting and menacing. And I liked the green hand and the index was cool. And then in campaign two, like, the gods were interesting. And I thought Eurelian was like a neat humanized like the the right was the humanized one and the left was not right um but this is the first villain where like i have not held anything back like this guy does not fuck around uh and there is and i am so happy to say this so much lore still to come um and perhaps some interesting surprises yeah. later in this campaign uh that's all i'll say but that is the end of this episode. Let's get right into the plugs. Thank you so much for watching the show, everybody. I really appreciate it. Uh, we will start with Pauly. Hi, uh, I am Danny in real life. And uh, I just got back from a month hiatus of streaming, just moved into a new place. So I am back up and running. Uh, I have been playing some Ocarina of Time, uh, be running some all dungeons, currently third place, looking to do a little better than that pretty soon. Um, Ocarina Time also has some cool stuff going on. Intro skip is allowed. You can you don't have to watch the cutscene in front of all your your uh, speedruns anymore. If you ever wanted to learn OOT, now's a good time. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Sweet, uh, Patty. Hi, my name's Bobby. You can find me at twitch.tv slash theblacktastic. Doing a wow. lot of uh, Curse of the Moon speedruns lately. Lots of speedrun content. So make sure to stop by, check out the channel, and drop a follow. Bird. Uh, Kung Fu Fruit Cup. Hi, my name's Patty. No. Um, go follow Patty, <laughs> It please. all shifted by one. Yeah. <laughs> Patty's great. Please go follow him. Um, I have a hotfix show coming up in about an hour, uh, which will be fun. Have on, So it'll be Undertale glitches tonight, so you can always oh, cool. watch that. Yeah, sure. Thank you, channel. Let's go. Then uh, Xenoblade 3 comes out at the end of the week, so if you like RPGs, nice. feel free to come check it out. Um, Dangers. Hi. Twitch.tv slash Dangers. I play Mario games fast. Um, Fall Guys just went free to play recently. Been playing a lot of that lately as well. Been it's loving just good. seeing that back on the content. Got to be honest. Yeah. Been loving it. Been loving. It's it. just chill vibes. It's, it's nostalgic. Bullying, bullying yeah. children nostalgic. is. Mm. <laughs> and there are so many people calling. that are even worse now. Right. Yes. Wow. It's a timeless classic. So it's always solo, solo something queuing to... squads and then screaming at your teammates. <laughs> it's the good stuff. 
something that's pretty cool that's a little bit outside of the content is that we're doing like a pre-sale for a plush that i that we finally got off the ground it's been like two years in the making um the pre-sale just hit its mark so it's going to be a thing which is great news but they're still available to order at tantrumcollectibles.com so if you ever wanted this boy you purple bird he's available 40 dollars plus shipping and there you go. they they do this stuff with all creators. I feel like I'm going like on a off the deep end with the plugs no, here, fine. but they do stuff with like all sorts of creators that you probably are familiar with, like the Dragon Feeny and the Beast and Shojo and you know if they're if they're a Mario Maker content creator of any kind, they're probably in that list. There's a whole bunch more as well, um, and some of them have plushes too. You get deals. There's all sorts of cool stuff going on, on the website. So um, support your favorite content creators. Tantrum is awesome. Hell yeah. Um. As far as the ADEF stream, I've uh, been doing a lot of uh, Pokemon Emerald Survival Ironmon stuff. That's been a blast. Um, it's been such a refresher. I can't thank Pi enough for making that challenge, dude. It's been such a nice thing to do because I can actually talk to my chat as opposed to 90% of my content. Um, and it's actually fun and stupid, but fun. Um, and the OT bingo tournament's going on right now. That's actually who we're going to raid in a second. There's a bingo match going on right now on the OTV channel, which is a really cool new Ocarina of Time speedrunning community channel um, that everybody should follow. It'll have everything from races to uh, uh, tournament matches and, and, and uh, you know, kind of exhibitions of cool things. It's a great channel, and I love the OT community, so you should check it out. Uh, that's who we're going to raid. Two of my friends, Game Stable and Ben, are racing right now. But yeah, OT Bingo Tournament, I just, I won my first round match. Second round match is this week on Wednesday. I am the underdog in this match, so who knows? Um, and that's it, really. Uh, cool stuff coming in the future. Uh, everybody, please be well. Stick around for the raid. I'm just going to play a little more advertisement, uh, and then we're going to raid on in. So everybody, please have an excellent day uh, and a wonderful evening, and we'll see you next time for more Speedrunners and Dragons.